and welcome. We are at our favorite saltwater fishing spot. Hope you're doing well. Ours, yours. So we're hoping the internet's going to not go wonky on us. Um, if it does, so be it. Not much we can do. We're out on the marsh. Yeah, we're out in the marsh. So, um, we're using mackerel tonight. Yep, Gina's got her mackerel piece on. I got uh, uh, mine. Fish always like the tail, remember that. Yeah. They like a little tail. Yeah, so don't all the men. So, yeah. Let's see. 50 degrees, we're hoping the fish are biting. And the twelve gauge with bird shot. Yeah, that's that's the way to do it. Oh no. Yeah, I thought I was getting a I bite was... already. It was <laughs> Gina. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and cast in and um see if we have any luck here. Lewis, thanks for hanging out, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Well, it really depends on how the tide is. It's very, very slow tide. Can I go on for you? Yeah. I don't think we'll be doing much drifting to begin with, but. I know. But now, since we're here, well, it's definitely about fifteen feet to uh, Oh, that goes down really far, really quick. Anybody in here yet? I'm happy with some friends. Nice, there's Lewis. Let's see if I can... Uh... Why, did you get stuck? Or did you almost fall? <laughs> Trying to figure this out real quick here. I'm not sure. chat. I believe that's how it's done. You know, what's up, Robert? <laughs> so there's that. I'm trying to figure out if I can pull somebody up. How you doing, Robert? Um, we're just getting here, getting set up. It is really low tide. I'm trying to figure out if I can bring Lewis up here if he's interested and we can at least have somebody to conversate with. Robert, you're more than welcome as well, buddy. But I also got to figure out how to do that on the phone if somebody comes up as well. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah, that's all right too, Robert. Yeah. Yeah, who's All right. Oh my goodness! Who are you going out to the abyss? <laughs> uh, 
Oh, that's hilarious. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna send it back out there. So the tide is just starting to turn, everybody. Good signal, I think. No, I mean I'm doing okay. You want? Yeah. Well, I did ask that. I meant if you wanted to come up here as well. It's also what I was saying. But if you're good there, that's that's all is all is well too. But I'm not sure if. Yeah, right? Ocean fishing off New Hampshire. I'm not sure how uh, how good the fishing is going to be f- at the beginning, but as the night progresses, we believe it's going to pick up just because of the way the tide is. It seems like it's um, the, the current's starting to take it a little bit. Yeah. I wish you guys could see more. We we tried to set up the lights the best we could, but um yeah. Not much you can do. <laughs> Lewis, I'm not sure if you're waiting backstage or not, buddy. I can't figure that out. Oh, no problem, Lewis. Um just don't be offended if I don't see you in the back in the back room immediately. But yeah, we're hoping to bring home a, sh- a-, a keeper tonight. Honestly, guys, like uh, one inch—that's all we needed, you know. One inch, and we would have had a keeper. That was a that was a seven-pound striper, Gina thought. And uh, I can't wait to release the video because, um, yeah, no, it's not deep. But the tide is starting to rip. Well, you know, pick up. Um, We got Gina, or I caught Gina's reaction to literally the biggest fish she's ever caught. And it's, it's absolutely adorable. She's like a little kid jumping up and down, screaming and swearing and all that good stuff. <laughs> it wasn't too bad. It just said, holy shit. Yeah. yeah. But you see, it's okay to have it now because we have TVMA. And also, if the signal wears out, we have the camera set up over yonder as well. So I'm just hoping that the uh, – I have – I'm just hoping the tide turns really quick. Yeah. It is starting to come in. I mean, it's going to be high tide at uh, 5 o'clock, so. Yeah. No, it was absolutely adorable watching Gina bring in a 7-pound striper. Oh. Um, I haven't dropped the video yet, dear. No, uh, he didn't say too much about it. I think he's a little jealous. He's jealous. He said that that was the biggest fish. Good. That was the biggest striper I've ever seen. Never mind caught. I really never caught one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's cold up here in New Hampshire tonight, everyone. Yeah, if you can't tell by the uh, hood attire, like I got, I got a wife beater. Um, it's a horrible name. It's a tank top. Okay, yeah, a tank top, a shirt, a sweatshirt, underwear, shorts, pants, thick socks. It's ridiculous. I have two sweatshirts on. A What's t-shirt. This belt loop. What's going on? We're doing a little fishing. Oh, is that a guest? Lewis. Lewis, right there. 
Add to stream. Is that you, Lewis? Hey, how's it going? Hey. Yes, it is. Hi. Let me try to. There, perfect. Excellent. It works. Cool. <laughs> how's it going? Well, you know, we're just getting out here, so um, nothing, nothing right now, but it's promising. You know, we got the tide just right. Uh, the bait's really fresh, and um, yeah, it's just a matter of waiting, really. Getting that tide. That's when the, in. the now I don't know how to look at the tides. That's when the water, like the water, comes in, like it rises where you are and it goes. Yeah, well, like the water well, comes goes, in and then it goes back out. Yeah, Correct. so you have low tide and you have high tide. Yeah. So low tide is when the water goes out completely. And so then high tide, it fills back in. It'll be called dead low, which is the point where can you'll you, have slack tide. Can you give them a view of like oh, I can't. It's the shore. Dark. Yeah, it's too dark. Um, if you could see it now, Lewis, this whole area right now Mickey. is nothing but boulders. What's up? Just rocks, as far as the eye can see, and then like a little bit of water. What, what do you? What exactly do you mean, Nikki? Because unfortunately, we're standing in the dark, and we're kind of, you know, lighting things up with flashlights. So, but in two hours, this water will be so high, we'll be sloshing in it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what you mean, Nikki. Um, unless you mean like the layout, then I got to figure out how to do that because everything's operated from the phone. I don't want to like mess up the stream either. <laughs> Lewis Ooh. Belt Loop says every time I see you, you're cooking. So what is it that you're? So what is it at the moment? LOL. Change the layout. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I just uh, I uh, had dinner. Uh, I made some chicken thighs in the air fryer and with beans Yum. and rice. Yum. Nikki, do you mean like that? Is that better? Worse? I mean, I'm I can't tilt my phone because my phone is that old. So you're only going to get the straight up and down. Yeah, view, we don't have the, the much side like Lewis has. His phone is eight years old. Yeah, but at least you get to see the pretty star rose in the background. That must have been a cheap phone. Yeah, mine's uh, mine's like. One that I'm on right now, it's over a thousand freaking dollars, and I just got Jeez. paid off. Yeah, we would never spend that kind of no, money. No, buddy, on phone. we we do the uh, Walmart Street and talk. Actually, track this is the most expensive phone he's ever had, and it was like two hundred and twenty dollars, brand new. Is this from the? It is yeah, a Galaxy. Well, I I deal with uh, I deal with Rogers, right? So. I, I'm pretty good with Rogers. I can walk in there and walk out of the store with paying for the phone right away. I just pay it on the bill. So, needless to, to say, it. it took me a few years to get it paid. We we do the prepaid thing because you know it's it's unlimited everything for fifty five a month. You can't really beat that, and it comes with a hotspot, so we have our own mobile Wi Fi. Wherever we go. Yeah. Okay. No one ever did see anything with mine, though. No wonder so why. <laughs> no wonder why I pay out the butt for my cell phone. Uh, some people prefer to, but, you know, I get it. Oh, he's already got a fish. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Nope. Yeah. Okay, I, that was a what bump. Unlimited though. tech. Yeah, I got unlimited texting, phone oh. calls, stuff like that. Come on, fishy. Apparently, they're hungry. Guys, that was a bump already. We've been here a half hour, so. I can't even believe there's fish in there. It's that low. I had to walk out just to hit water. So what did everybody do today? Oh, we're getting some uh, reverb. My dog decided to uh, chew through 50 feet of hose, so I had to water Ooh. everything by hand today. Oh, that's rough. Well, <laughs> I, dog hose. Oh, no, it's, it is what it is, right? I was upset it when it happened. 
but it's my fault, right? I should have known better for the last dog I had. I couldn't leave a set of shoes anywhere without him getting them. So I should have known better, right? <laughs> uh, so belt loop worked. He's on it. He'll be home soon. Gear worked, ticked off a few people, said the heck with it. Oh, gear. Worth it. It's the weekend now. Is Hello. That gear's in here? Yes, gear is in What's here. What's up, gear? Um, we didn't work today. Unfortunately, um our sticky traps did not work. We have a very freaking smart rat, and the thing actually flipped the sticky traps upside down in the dirt. So um, I went out today, and you have to imagine I planted 44 pepper plants when I started. I'm down to 14 pepper plants. And I literally took them out of the ground today with Chris's help and put them in pots to save what was left. Because if I had left them in there another night, I would have no pepper plants. And then I pre yeah. we proceeded to set up the bucket trap. And when we get home, we'll also be deploying antifreeze. <laughs> I tick people off on purpose, too. Yeah. The only person I work with is my husband. So. Probably do it with peanut butter. We're going to do a multitude of things, Lewis. We're going to do tuna, cat food. We're going to set him up a buffet of antifreeze. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. The he's, got, the better, right? he's, he's got nothing left in there to eat. All Everything green is now out of the greenhouse, except for mint, which is hanging that he can't get to. So if he wants to eat, he's going to have to eat the antifreeze or the peanut butter that will throw him into a lake of water. <laughs> a lake of antifreeze. Yeah, should should have done the antifreeze. Yeah, from the get go, but you know, I have a heart still. So, but that heart is. Oh no! Uh, hey, you, you live and learn, right? You live and learn. You know, I get it. Uh, I worked in the meat industry uh, for thirty plus years, right? Was raised uh, as a kid. Never got used to it, right? And to, yeah. Like the first time I seen the kill floor, I cried. I was a little kid, right? I thought. Meat came out of a car factory or something, right? So when I seen my first kill floor, I cried, right? But after yeah. that, my my dad had to sit down with me and said, you know, we we uh, we uh, farm these animals, we produce these animals, so we can eat them, right? So we're we're kind of breeding them, and so they don't go extinct, right? We're not like coyotes or whatever, right? So when we go hunting, we're only allowed to go X amount of weeks. Allowed to, we have to do this, do go jump through some hoops to do this, that, and the other, right? Just like how you guys have to go get a license, register your bow for fishing, and right? You could probably only do it for fish that's one inch too short. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we we we've been human beings have been raised to not kill animals. Oh. Um, unfortunately, but you know, it's in our diet too, right? So the pro Nikki, I'm so sorry if you were um, back there long. Hey, Nikki. <laughs> wow. I just cracked. Like I was going through puberty. <laughs> <laughs> What's it's, up? It's, it's like fishing. Right? Yeah, it's like on. you guys fishing. Yeah. You guys are much, fishing. Right? Like, yeah. We're yeah, I just got a bump 10 minutes ago, but, you know, sometimes they just, you know, they tease you, so. <laughs> We're kind of waiting for the tide to come in. Yeah, yeah. Once the tide comes in, we expect it to be much, much, and then much we'll better. And then we'll be regretting that we didn't bring more bait. Yeah, pretty much. We brought six six fish with us. Like, that's probably about 20 chunks of bait. We'll see. We didn't anticipate being out here very long because it's only 52 degrees. Oh. But I feel pretty good, really. Like, yeah, what are you so fishing for? Striper. Striper. Sea bass. Okay. Yes, yeah, strippers. Yep. 
we want some strippers tonight. Gina's feeling frisky. <laughs> strippers? Did somebody say strippers? <laughs> They're honestly so fun to catch, Nikki. Oh, yeah. Wait till you see the video when I did catch my big one. I, I literally was jumping up and down. <laughs> but there, it was so much of a fight. Like, the thing fought me for so long, I didn't think I was going to be able to get it in. Yeah. I was like, Chris, I don't I know care. if I can do it. He's like, you got it. Just do this. Just do that. Just do this. Just do that. Yeah. But it's so <laughs> cute. You see, she's jumping up and down like a little friggin' school girl. Like, oh, my God, look at this shit. I don't believe it. <laughs> it was literally the biggest fish I've ever seen in my life. Seven pounds, twenty-seven ounces. No, seven pounds, twenty-seven inches. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh. Sorry, twenty-seven inches. I mean, that's like <laughs> half my body. You know what I mean? Twenty-seven <laughs> inches. That's like. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> Impressive, that's Nina. Nice. And when, you know, you don't hey, really Chris. know until you pull it on shore. And, like, I pulled it on shore, and I only saw the head, and I was like, oh, whatever. Then I pulled it a little more, and I was like, oh, my God, that thing is huge. What's up, Lewis? Go ahead, Lewis. Sorry. Belt Loop. Bell Loop says, Bell get, Loop. The get the doll. Get the doll. Get the, yes, I the, doll, the doll is in Ohio yeah. um, with a lot of patchwork yeah. done to her. Yeah. Yep, she, she got poked a lot. <laughs> I don't think she would survive the ocean. No. These, <laughs> these hooks are friggin' sharp, man. Gear, have you been out fishing yet? Hey, Gear. Gear, fishy, fishy, fishy. <laughs> That's great. Gear says, dude was like quite the customer service. I replied, quite the customer. Have a great evening. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. About time for a job change, probably. Hey, Q. Yo, <laughs> she said, Chris and Gina going fishing in the dark. No poking ginger at all. No, no. No, she definitely would not survive these hooks. That's a country song. You and me go fishing in the dark. I love yeah. it, honestly. It's so peaceful. Around oh. here during the summer, you cannot go near the salt water without crowds of people. No really? matter where you go. Yeah, it's tourist season here. So um. they, they all flock, they all flock here for the summer. And, like, literally, if you go down to our, our beach, like, where you can lay and sunbathe and all, you can't even see the sand. All you wow. see is umbrellas, towels, and people. Wow. And skin. And it's like, <laughs> like, get out. Please, just go home. Right. Jay was saying that when we moved to Ohio, that we could drive the 10 hours to come visit you guys, get, like, a hotel or something. And then Jay really wants to go night fishing with Chris. And then he's like, and then you ladies can have a day, gr a girl's day the next day. Yeah. Well, I'll have to dress as Chrissy. <laughs> I'll have to dress as Chrissy. <laughs> I would um, love for you guys to all come up here. Like I, I said, know. though, summer, summer is... I'm pulling with my emotions here. May I get bumped? Pretty sure, yeah. Or crab. You have like a bunch of crabs. Yeah, I probably got some crabs. <laughs> hey, you've got crabs. Yeah. She's she's up the river. Everybody gets crabs that sits on the trap public branded bugs. Oh, great. Now the bugs are coming out. Go away. How's the battery doing? Which battery? The no, the phone. You're at 72%. Okay. Is everybody just got a close up of my face? Boom. Yeah. See, Q was picking up what I was putting down. <laughs> I've never heard that song. I'm going to have to look it up. It's like a classic country song. Who sings it? I don't fucking know. I'd Google it, but I'm on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Q, any idea? 
I hear him cranking his rod back yeah, here. I'm, I'm like, a horrible singer, so I probably butchered the shit out of it. They probably play it, and you're like, oh, I know that song. <laughs> <laughs> oh, knock, knock. We have a knock, knock. <laughs> Robert saying knock, knock. Oh, my goodness. There's all kinds He's of people there. in here. Let's see. We got a, we got a, we got an Aqua Jedi. We have. Uh oh. We at our limit. I don't hey, know. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, Robert. Belt Ooh. loop, buddy. I sorry, Robert. Belt loop. I don't know if um you drop down or we're I can only at have our four limit because we're on the phone. Yeah, but what's going on, Robert? Hey hey. Hey. hey, 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 how are you doing? Are we uh, losing service? <laughs> I'm getting some serious <laughs> lag here or something. What you do, Robert? Yeah, I don't know. Something, I don't know. I'm sure our service is in and out to Robert. We're, you know. Oh, hold on, hold on. I know what I did. Ahead. Hang on a second. Oh, all right. He he knows what's going on. <laughs> Nitty gritty dirt band. I will look it up. Okay. No, no. Yeah, if um that guest lights up, that means there's people here. I didn't even notice. I was reading the chat. I forgot to close out my YouTube. It's been uh, it's been too long since I've been up on a live stream. Uh, I forgot how to do it. Yeah, y'all know that song. Y'all killing me over there. Nikki, who was it? You and me going fishing in the dark. I love that song. It's a good song. Yeah, that's a great song. Uh, you I'm, I'm and me going fishing in the dark. Line on her backs and count the stars. The the, where the green grass grows. <laughs> yeah. It's a good song. They took my bait, guys. Yeah, it was probably the crab. Yeah. Put a tuna sandwich on there. Put a what? A tuna sandwich. Yeah, you know, that's hilarious you say that. Yes, it she, we told her works. the story. Oh, okay. yeah, you told me the story. Where's your tuna sandwich? Come on. You know, yeah. you know what bait you need. That's fresh water, though, Nikki. Oh, don't put a sandwich <laughs> on the hook. You'll catch somebody's husband. <laughs> <laughs> no, there oh. was one day we we were freshwater fishing and all freaking day, all day, like all day, hours and hours, completely sunburned, like a hundred degrees outside, and. We're looking at the fish. We have this man-made, um, I guess you can call it a, res a quarry, reservoir, whatever. Um, they started b digging there to build stuff. And, yeah, we have 350 feet of water there. Now. So um, they stock it. And we were looking at these fish all day. Like, we're bouncing hooks off their head. Nothing. We tried worms. We tried shiners. We tried plastics. Nothing would appeal to them. Finally, we had lunch, and I'm looking at Chris, and I'm like, I wonder if they would eat this sandwich. Chris is like, you're crazy. They're not going to eat a sandwich. So I literally smushed it onto my hook, threw it in. Next thing you know, bam, immediately. I was like, that's all we needed to do was feed them sandwiches all day. Freaking cannibal fish. Yeah, fish eating tuna. That's with awesome. mayo, Robert. With mayo. With mayo, yes. <laughs> the mayo that got him. <laughs> Q says she misses Captain serenading us. <laughs> <laughs> that song's in my head now. I, would I wish play I could it, play it for, for you, <laughs> but like... Even if we did, you'd get copyright strike or some shit. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous nowadays. See, that's where the other platforms you can play music and go live, and like you're good. Which I'm which really one starting to is think the best about one. 
Um, I'm crossing my platform with uh, TikTok. Okay. You hit a thousand followers or subscribers or whatever, and you yeah. can go live and you can play your music. You can, you know, people can request songs and you can play it for you them and you can interact. A cigarette. <laughs> you can drink you can a beer. A cigarette. You can drink a beer. I mean, obviously, you can't do things that aren't legal in all 50 states, but mm, yeah. Um, yeah. You'll get warnings and like banned and stuff. You can't drive while mm. you're live on there. Um, which is smart, in my opinion. Which is funny. You can't yeah. point the camera at you while you're driving, but you can point it at the road and you won't get banned. Yeah. Because uh, you're makes, concentrating on the yeah. road instead of that. That makes sense. Yeah. Because if you got it pointed at you, you're sitting there looking at everything and. Reading, yeah. doing is flipping your camera and reading comments anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, I mean, from what I've seen. <laughs> yeah. Well, how long can you make a, a video on TikTok, or can you you can go live? Apparently, and... um, you can make videos uh, like fifteen seconds, thirty seconds, or over a minute. Um, I I mean, I sit down and watch minute plus videos on there. I'm not okay. saying you're going to get a lot of views because people's attention span on TikTok is like scroll, 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 scroll. Oh, that's interesting. Scroll. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> do pe- how do. Because every TikTok video I've ever seen is like real short. So yeah. you can play music, but it's not much music or whatever because you can't have long videos on there, right? Or you can do live, like. Um, can you do live? I uploaded like a two and a half minute video and it took the whole thing. So I don't know. I just think that the shorter videos do better on yeah. TikTok. Like if you can make a funny short, post it, on, YouTube, no, post it on TikTok. But there's no live streams, right? No, there yeah, are live streams. Live stream. She, she oh, okay, was so. doing it when we were at Courtney's. Yeah. Okay. You can go live once you hit a thousand followers on TikTok. Which is a lot. They give YouTube. you gifts and. Yeah. Uh, Nikki made paid? like four dollars and sixty cents her first live on TikTok. Well, there you go, you get paid. Huh. So the only <laughs> thing about that Robert, is they take they take sixty percent right off the top, but you're not paying for anything, so yeah. it's still your profit. Yeah. yeah. And you can I have up to three people for total on like a panel. Yeah, I can't it's, I'm learning anything. the ropes over there. I'm super new at it. I'm like a month, month and a half new at TikTok. I mean, I was on it about a year ago, but not like I never went live. Um, I just followed people. I, I've I only see TikToks on Facebook, really. Right. And I'm bad. And that's why I've never downloaded the app because I'm one of those people that will sit there for hours and just watch those stupid little short videos. Chris is like, will you do something more productive with your life? I'm like, no, thanks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, the most I've seen on TikTok and it, I, I don't I don't watch it there, it's, but they got the, the, the girls doing them dances and stuff and that's about it. That's about all I ever see. Um, yeah, they have a lot of that. They do a lot of ridiculous challenges, and yeah. it's kind of mindlessness. But there, sure are some bird, right? there are some people that do. There are some people that do educational stuff, but it's yeah. few and far between. Like I'm on Garden Talk. Um, I not personally, but like I follow a bunch of gardeners. With like, there's this one lady that did a really funny. Um, TikTok where she used uh, cornstarch and water and like boiled it and made like a paste and then yeah. took, pulled it and then took her like small seeds and then like shot it out the bag. It was pretty huh. funny. And that's how she planted like her carrots and her whatever. And she's like, I know you dirty minds what this looks like. It really did look like jizz. <laughs> <laughs> With seeds. And it's got, it yeah, it's got seeds. 
It was her sweet morning. delivery system. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it's kind of the same thing as doing the whole, you know, toilet paper. <laughs> or, yeah. yeah. I've wanted to try that, but I don't have the patience to sit there and put seeds in toilet paper. No. I'd rather just sprinkle them on the dirt. <laughs> right. I'm going to be good and not say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is it coming in yet? Yeah. I want them to catch a big old fish. I know. I'm so rooting for them. We need it, it, to back if they catch a, I, just, I get to I claim half the fish. Inch. I just need yeah. one an inch bigger. Just an inch bigger. That's what she said. <laughs> ah, it's still a little a little slack. But from, from what I've been hearing with the other people in our lives that do fishing, saltwater fishing, um, so far we've gotten the biggest fish, at least around us. My oh, niece's yeah. boyfriend was down at the beach today for a few hours and he didn't even get a bite, which is what me and Chris encountered for the first, first four nights that we went fishing. It was quite frustrating. We tried one spot because we thought it was gold mine and then we yeah, come the, down here and pull out four fish like okay the spot that we found it's a pier and it's off of our public beach so it's seabrook beach which seabrook beach is like you know it's a few miles long it's not like the other beaches around us and we're like what is this there's like this new little park with picnic tables and a gazebo and really nice t- and we go out and sure enough there is a pier right there and the pier is even set up. It's got little tables for cutting up your bait. It's got a nice log bench, like comfort. Got the drag going but no away. fish. <laughs> wow. Uh, is there a time? I mean, is it? Are the stripers in there in that area uh, coming in good now? Uh, oh, is it about to be good season for them or what? Should this should be on. prime season, like starting to be prime season right now. Like, yeah, the, the thick of it will be in um, the end of summer and into the fall a little bit. When they're starting to head back down south, yeah. too, that's another. But how high, how high are y'all off of the water right now? Um, it, doesn't look, it doesn't look that high. So the, the, the tide's um, coming in at this particular spot, and it kind of drops dramatically. Yeah, I, I don't know if they'll be able to see me. But, but um, it's probably about 12 feet until you get to water. Okay. But it by the, by the time the tide is high, where Gina so. is right now in the distance, yeah, she can, you can kind of see her. I could literally there'll be water there. Out. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so it's like a twelve foot tide. That's pretty. Uh, yeah, it, it'll pretty come up twelve feet. Tonight. That's because of the uh, last strawberry supermoon, too, Robert. If that's you, why. If you okay. See where, the tip, where the tip of Chris's fishing rod is, Robert, the water will come up to there. Yeah. Okay. Like you'll be splashing in a puddle right there. Ooh. Yeah. Come on. Come on. But there's plenty of land behind us. I mean, there's an entire parking lot behind us. Like. Yeah. That's Y'all got the phone okay. set up on the tripod out there. And, and, yep, phone uh, on the tripod. We got flashlights, a magnet camera, flashlight. The camera's on that tripod over there. Plus, you know, rechargeable flashlights and all that good stuff. Have you Chris, got your little battery you tank for it or anything? Yes, yeah. we have We have the TAC life. I don't know if you know what that is. It's like oh, okay. a portable... It's, we use it for the telescope typically. Like it's got actual outlets in it that you can yeah. use. And then it's got like your phone charging outlets and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And it lasts quite a long time. We got one of those, um, what do you call those lights? Um, so it's like, it, it looks like a fan. On TV and it has three panels on it. And each panel has a hundred LED lights. And it's just like a super it's like, spotlight. It's like 60 thousand lumens isn't it or six thousand thousand lumens yeah it's real like you can't look into it or you'll blind yourself yeah. literally we usually yeah, use them, but unfortunately we only get like 
five hours. Yeah, we can we can run an actual lamp. That's how ghetto we are around here. Yeah. We bring a lamp with us fishing. And we plug it in, we and that thing it points in any direction you want, so you can aim it. But yeah, you get five hours. And <clears throat> the last time we were out here, the fish were hitting so good that we were literally standing here in the pitch black catching fish. <laughs> like, quick, get the flashlight on your phone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But once you once you start getting on them, you don't want to, you know, Ooh. leave at all. There's a jump. Fish jumped out there. They don't jump. They surface. Okay. <laughs> Come on, fish. Ooh, we're talking about bacon. What? So I'm, I'm over. So I'm over there playing with ten pounds of raw meat, packing it up, and I hear y'all over here being bad. Mmm, crispy oven baked bacon is the best. Got to mix up my cheese filled <laughs> bacon burgers. Cheese filled. Wow. What kind of cheese, Q? What kind of cheese are you talking? See, do a, do a pizza burger. Stuff it with mozzarella. That pretty dang good. Does it not? I could go for a st- cheese stock burger. We got a killer deal today on Hamburg. Five pounds for eight eighty-two. Yeah. It was on clearance, good. but like when you see it now, we grab it. Like oh, yeah. we don't even hesitate. Oh yeah. Honestly, yeah. if you look at our freezer, it's all yellow tag manager manager special. That's how we buy meat now. Cause... I'm telling you right now, um, <laughs> the folks aren't putting away everything they need. Everything they need for the next year or two, they're gonna be hurting. You know that's and people aren't that's just straight up, aren't. and they're not. Like, yeah, and. I it's look at my be... nie- my niece and her boyfriend who, you know, they have a brand new humongous house and they have a roommate that's paying rent. Her boyfriend makes 60 an hour. Like they're not hurting for money and they don't even have food in the house. They go out to eat like every single night. I'm like, you need to have food stored in your home. They're going to You learn. need to have water stored in your home. Yeah. They're going to learn because it, I mean, it's just so depressing. It is so, it is, I even they, hate to think about it anymore. Uh, but uh, Robert, I think with the younger generation too, like, I don't know if it's just because they're so used to chaos that it doesn't bother them anymore. It's normal. It's to anything. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. there's... The amount of people that's ever experienced in this country, what they're predicting this to be, is, it may be only none. There may be yeah. no one that has ever lived that's experienced this. I mean, people of depression and everything like that, people talk about that, and that, that was bad, right? But it was actually still pretty yeah. good times. Yeah, it could be. You know, what they're saying is not, it's, it ain't going to be good. And, uh, uh, but anyhow, we're fishing tonight. (laughs) (laughs) I I just, uh, Robert, I see where you're coming from though. Like, I, I don't know. I think people are just barely holding their head above water and that is like good enough for them right now. And it shouldn't be. I don't understand. Because I don't want to sit here and brag, but like Gina and I haven't ever been in a better position than we have right now. But, oh, but well, this is life. Expect that to change at any moment. Exactly. <laughs> that's and, that's, and Robert, that's Robert, why I'm, we... I'm definitely not naive, but it's just <laughs> yeah. funny that like everybody else is that's struggling and we're like. I don't know. But like, it's a different lifestyle. Like, this is what me and Chris do for fun. You know, yeah. we spend $11 to get a fishing license. And yeah. we spent $40 on bait that will last us a week. Yeah. Like, yeah. And then that's it. Like, that's it. This we is, won't spend any more money. And then if we actually get a keeper, we're bringing food home with us. So, that's kind right. of a win-win. <laughs> well, can y'all fish for anything else while you're out there? Oh, we um, can. Yeah, there, there's tons of stuff we can keep, Robert. It's just the fact that they don't 
they don't come in as close to shore. Like John with the black, with like the black sea bass, they're usually deep water. Yeah, we don't get that here um, unless we have a boat. But Even when we do, we can only get into the harbor with the size boat we have. Uh, so we can get some flounder, we can get clams, oysters, striper. Well, you can get clams if you have another fifty dollar license. And then you'll <laughs> have then you'll have the occasional rare fish. Like, oh yeah, I've seen a I've never seen a black bass. I had no idea what it I've was. I've seen I've seen bluefish. Yep. That I've is an ugly fish. Them dang black yeah, bass, the black sea bass that John is catching. They are yeah. ugly. Yeah, I think beautiful. <laughs> well, when he pulled that out, I was like, "Oh my god, I've never seen anything like it." Saying, yeah, but exactly two minutes later, they are this nasty-looking little thing. Look who got yeah. we got coming in here. We got an old man coming in here. We got Tony. Tony, hey. Tony, done What's snuck up? in here on us. I can't believe you're still up, Tony. Well, he's three hours behind. So oh, it's hi, Tony. Nice no, to meet you. Yeah, Hugh, it's horrible. Hugh says, I live in low-income housing place, and these people waste their money on garbage, junk food, candy, and crap. Yeah, My kids that's go that's to their houses to eat candy and junk food and come home to eat good real food. <laughs> See, that's, that's not us, and that's, I guess, yeah. why we're in a position we are now. We don't buy, we don't go out to eat. If we do, it's very, very rare, like rare, once a year rare. Um, yeah, we don't really have a life, so we work in fish now and garden. <laughs> and look at the stars. And like my with my niece and her boyfriend there today, and actually Chris's brother came down with his wife, which was an experience. Um, but. Yeah, they were like, oh, my God, look at this place. They're, you know, they're snapping peas off my plants, trying them out. Like, you could do this. You have property. <laughs> Just saying. I'm surprised oh. even but, you know, I slept, so. Oh, no, not your brother. Your brother just, he kind of brushed it off. Yeah. He was like, oh, it's beautiful. And he wasn't even looking at the garden when he said it. I was just, like, freaking just, look at it. Just another thing that he could be that way about. Yeah, they, they showed up today after two and a half years of not seeing us. And well, walked that's into a start, right? It is, but they walked into our house with mask on. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well. Here's the, yeah. no, but here's. Here's the funny thing, Robert, and you're gonna shake your head at this. I didn't. I was asleep the whole time, but from my understanding, they wore the mask in the, the house the whole time they were in the house. And then, as soon as they exited the house for the garden tour, they took the mask off, and then they were hugging everybody without the mask on. So, <laughs> um, um, they only live in the house. Yeah, mm. I, right? Like. I don't know. She's a scientist at Yale, people. WTF. Well, that explains it. WTF. Oh, she, she was one of the people that actually worked on said jab. Yeah. But at least they came after two and a half years. It's a start, I guess. <laughs> and and Trudeau got the coof point. We got what? You can't hear it. Really. Trudeau caught it twice now. Oh, so didn't Dr. Mangala, I mean Fauci. <laughs> got yeah, a dog Fauci here. Too, so. This dog is hollering to get out, so I'm going to have to let her out. Tony, uh, here for a Tony's talking oh. about something oh, kind of You're going to go fish. Don't hit me with your hook. Did you, I was gonna say, did you steal my tail? No, I'm gonna do that later after the live. Ha <laughs> ha, ba boom. <laughs> uh, seriously, I'll be pretty depressed if um, you know, we get skunked here. What? Especially since we're doing a live fishing show. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm not> <laughs> 
Like those cosmics talk a big game, but they ain't shit. <laughs> That's my job. I have faith you guys are gonna catch something, whether it be crabs. <laughs> well, they, yeah, we catch crabs all the time. Like if it, it pushed them to shove, we could literally survive on that. Is, that is true. Like we wouldn't go hungry we because that. we're always catching crabs. So. Which is bad for your bait. Yeah. No, this will be pretty cool, though. If uh, we do catch a fish, you guys will be able to see us in live action oh, recording. Sorry, recording this for, uh, I guess, the rodeo. Yeah, Robert? An anything we're doing, we can label the rodeo. Oh, he's muted. He must be pooping. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Where you get Those are the noises that right? should be coming from my camera. <laughs> plop, 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 yeah. plop. Yeah, you're in the right room. Right. Yeah, her first cast and she gets caught on a rock. Oh, no. Yeah. You just, you just got to know how to navigate it. Oh, now she's going to be screwing around with a rock for the next 10 minutes until I go over there and free it for her. <laughs> go do the, the man job. The hard job. Yeah, I, go know, I, I, I let her until she gets really frustrated and I'm like, okay, let me see. Okay, I'm at that point. Okay. She's at that point. In the water. I hope she catches such a big, much bigger fish than you have, Tris. I hope she whoops your butt out there. <laughs> I will if I don't keep getting stuck on rocks. <laughs> there it is. Thank you. Here. My bait's still there? Yeah, but hold the line tight so that way I can fix your reel and we're not going to have... Just be cautious that there's a hook coming at you at some point. Okay, hold on. Where is that? That's scary. Okay. <laughs> yeah, are you, you still good? I just don't want you to get your line all tangled up. That's all. Let's get your line tight. <laughs> See? Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Live stream See? and uh, new piercings all at the same time. Yeah, well, that right. Ha that happened to my brother in front of me, and it looks painful right through the ear. Uh, you guys can't really see the hook on that, but you can see the chunk of fish that I'm using. And that ought to catch something. It, it should, yeah. It should. You got a bobber on there? No, no, no bobbers tonight, Robert. We could probably use a bobber right now, though. About the only time you use a bobber here is when it's really slack tied, because if you don't, then you're just feeding the crabs. Uh. Well, there's something right there. Can y'all put out uh, uh, crab traps or anything? Um, the crabs that we have down here, Robert, you can't really eat them. They're so oh, small. By the time you get done cooking them, you, you've basically turned the meat into uh, flavored water. Oh, y'all got them little ugly crabs, don't you? Exactly, yeah. the little where, ones. Out where John goes, like deep in the ocean, yeah, you'll find bigger crab, but Man. not in shore. It's just the little annoying ones. It's like marsh crabs. Like, it's the best way to describe it. Marsh just crabs. Little, little, little. That's crabs. right, Bill Lou. Yeah, the crab you catch in the seat of a bus. The year without a summer, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's been quite, it's been so cold here for the past week. Like, we had 80, 90 degree days for like three days. It was great. My we plants started going. We had one that was 93. Oh, we did. We most certainly did. You're, you're hot. No, you are. Yeah. And don't feel bad. <laughs> Don't feel so bad. I got the heat on right now. Yeah, that's that's what it's like here tonight. 
Well, uh, the, the heat wave we had finally one. went through, and now it's uh, it's dropped down to 65, going into the upper 50s tonight. Um, yeah, see, I'm wondering if that's why it was so warm here, Robert, with the heat wave that you guys were experiencing. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it just moved through the country, you know. Uh, but there was a lot of places that was like 105 degrees, way, way up north. Uh, or well, not way up north, but out west and up north. Um, yeah, uh, Tennessee was a lot hotter than I am down here in Alabama. And, I can't uh, even imagine that too. It's like I don't know. You go from like seventy degrees to like a hundred and ten, one hundred and fifteen. Yeah. Anybody else notice that it's like Chris pissing in the bushes? Uh, looks like you're pooping in the bushes. What me? Yep. <laughs> well, what are you doing looking, Nick? <laughs> <laughs> It's blue for the blue. <laughs> it kind of does look like he's taking a leak. I will, I will give you that. Yeah, how's this? <laughs> Can you guys see what I'm doing? No, not really no. at all. Well, that it's, sounds creepy. It's provocative. So. It's provocative. He's holding his rod where his rod goes. Yeah. <laughs> That's a pretty rod he got. <laughs> Thank you. It's uh, it was an expensive one. Just bought me a new bait runner. What three days ago? Yeah. The most money we have spent on anything in the longest time. It was a hundred and ten bucks. Well, that's not that bad. Like, but well, I gotta have it. It's not bad. It's not bad. No, the bait the bait shops around here are pretty honest people. Like, they don't try to just rip you off, you know? He's yeah. like, well, I got the really expensive name brand ones, if you care about that. Or I got the same thing in medium that is great. It's not going to break, and it's not going to break your bank. It was like a difference of $200 just because of a name on the bait runner. Yeah. Well, you know, for, for saltwater rig, $110 is not really that bad. Yeah. Um, I mean, I definitely couldn't catch like a shark with it. I'd be I, doomed. I know what you mean, <laughs> Robert. I have a Shimano 6500 here that's uh, 15 years old. Yeah. And back then it was probably 300 bucks. Yes, it was. Yeah. yeah. But you know what? I, this thing is tried and true, and it's caught many stripers. So. Yeah. It's not fancy. Oh, uh, what are you talking about? You're <laughs> you're lacking this year. I'm up by two. What you're catching in quantity, I'm catching in weight. So no, you're not. <laughs> I don't think so. I was, now I was feel the love all the way up to here again. Robert, I I think you need to give John crap about those black bass because from oh, what he um. What he talks about, you know, going out and catching these monstrous fish, and he's bringing in little four pound ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you're, it's catching the amount the bait, John, of, you're catching the bait. It's the amount of four pound small ones yeah. that he's bringing in. Um, I don't have a hope in hell of catching as much fish as that man does, okay? Um, yeah. At all. Um, <laughs> can't do it. There's no way. I, you um, wouldn't. You wouldn't. Definitely wouldn't be able to beat him in weight, Robert. But if it was like fish to fish, I don't know. I've had way met, better freshwater days than I have saltwater. Oh God, but he yeah, has fish a, to fish. You know, he, he has a he has a boat, so he has the advantage with saltwater. But yeah, but we are getting our boat. So. That's what just, we need to do because I I put in there. You know, the first, the biggest, and the most. Maybe we do need to have just uh, whoever. Now, this don't count for anybody watching, you know, if you throw a net out there. Yeah, but, no. But, no. You know, With line fishing, you know, if, <laughs> whoever catches the most, even if they're little fish. See, I could yeah. compete with that. 
So yeah. I could catch I, little. I would do it, Robert, because if you're if you're going fresh to salt water, fresh water Ooh. don't does not stand a chance. And, and just an idea: there's somebody on panel who has a 3D printer who knows how to make little trophies. Ooh. Well, Robert. Her spouse. Yeah, yeah. Her spouse has a 3D printer and printed out oh, this yeah. awesome uh, poop emoji trophy for Courtney. Oh, yeah. You so just skull, like a too. little Pretty trinket, cool. uh, you know, America. maybe. Yeah, like um, well, uh, the fish king, whoever catches the most fish gets a little trophy for the year. <laughs> I think Jay and, would um, think that that would be really cool to, like, participate with that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the we uh, we the fishing rodeo contributions. So it yeah. it's up to the community to offer, you know, the the yeah. prizes and trophies and stuff like that. There you, you go. Know, I'll talk to Jay about so it. If he anybody wants to do anything, let me know. Yeah, and we'll, well, we'll, we'll get you set up. We did, so we're gonna get some salt water stuff too, and uh, put that up for uh, you know prizes and stuff. Yeah, yeah. that'll be. Um, and we'll, we'll get you set up with secret code words and uh, get that going because that's, uh, you know. Um, oh, Rob, we were just planning no, on no, getting, no, buddy, we were I, just planning on giving them out to whoever, yeah, whatever yeah, like, category you wanted to. Really. Yeah, like most fish, biggest fish, so on and so forth. Like we're just, it'll you know, be our contribution man. to it. That's all. Yeah. Well, yeah. That, that's cool. But um, uh, I think, you know, the deal with the code words, is you know like say you want to sponsor if you want to you want to give a prize to whoever catches the first whatever fish and we'll put out a video y'all put out a video announcing the the code word and boom yeah. you know whatever um, you want to do robert really like ooh, barracuda we'll talk, we'll talk john later. can catch a barracuda yeah but that only localizes <laughs> it to like the southern there's no barracuda i'm going to do something for the kids um I'm going to put out a couple of them and, um, yeah. you know, yeah, that would, specific yeah. things. Maybe we can, maybe we can get like one of those little fishing pool things. That's like 15 bucks. That is, most of the kids are older right there. I wouldn't. All right. Fair enough. I would get them some cool little, yeah. you know, tackle boxes. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. We've got uh, Ragnarok and, um, Rim's family and then, um, uh, oh, Rebel okay. Canner's son. Yeah, she's got a son that's out there. He's a fishing demon, and uh, he's, he's catching a lot of fish. Does Michael Sharp's kid fish, or is he just a uh, uh, gardener? I'm not sure. No. Well, hey, I'm gonna take off. I need to go relax. It's almost ten thirty, and I gotta get to bed. All right, All right Nikki. Nikki. Thanks well, for hanging yeah, out. Thanks for coming on. Good to see you. I love you all. Good to see you. Bye, yeah. Nikki. Bye, Robert. <laughs> See you later there, Nikki. See, y'all messed me up. I was going to be good tonight and go to bed about an hour ago. <laughs> and then y'all popped this up. <laughs> oh, Gear said he was going to start catching up on videos tonight. Was. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Z. I don't know what that is. Well, the tide is kind of crap right now. We were hoping to show you guys some, you know, live action, but apparently it's dead. Well, <laughs> I'm, I haven't given up on it yet. We're coming into the good part. Well, yeah, it's just patience and waiting for the water. Oh. As Gear would say, the night's still young. It is. Don't, Don't you wish everything took this much time, Gina? I really did. I really did. Like <laughs> the thing of it, the thing of it is, Robert, is it goes by so fast. Like we, when we were freshwater fishing, we were out there for nine hours. Nine hours. It felt like ten minutes. It really did. <laughs> Y'all caught a bunch of fish, and then oh, that was that was a fun day. Yeah, the ones that, that were catching. Was, that snake was crazy. Like it harassed us all day long. <laughs> like just yeah. go away. There's um, 
there's a couple of people out there that um, have like a pet water snake almost. Uh, he feeds them. They come up on the pier uh, to take fish out of his hands. That's amazing. Yeah. They'll climb up in the in, on the pier and then climb up in his lap, basically, and take the fish, and then they're gone. That's um, so cool. But yeah, it's um. But y'all y'all had a great day out there. That was a lot of fun. A lot of fun to watch. Too too. We didn't even know what we were catching. Yeah. <laughs> we need to yeah. fresh up on our freshwater fish. Yeah. I, I'm taking it those were mostly crappie. <laughs> Yeah, I left y'all some comments on there. The, yeah, I saw, the, I saw yours. I was like, uh, yeah, whenever you're saying it was a perch, uh, those are black crappie. Black Which, crappie. Honestly, Robert, if we had known that, most of those would have been keepers. Yeah, <laughs> but now but see, here's the thing. Guys. Um, if if, if y'all will go through there and figure out which one is your biggest black crappie, then yep. that counts for a five pound fish that's a five pound fish even if I you let it go i think i caught the biggest and it was almost a pound was it almost a pound or almost two pounds it was like it was 11 ounces and 11.5 inches yeah 11 ounces so a, a little more than a half a pound hey tony's going to bed take care tony sorry to hear hey, about Tony. your uh, um uh, dad, um, your father-in-law there, losing his stuff, man. That's pretty sad. You have a good night and hug Willa for me, please. He said good luck to us. Thanks, buddy. The tide's starting to really come in. It's starting to see. See? Yeah, it's not the tide I'm worried about. It's the rocks that I'm worried about. <laughs> Might have to walk down there, but then I'm afraid the tide comes in too fast and I'm swimming back to shore. They get hung up. Yeah, they're, it's like where Chris is standing straight down, it's just, it's all, they're like the size of boulders all the way down. Yeah. So as you're reeling in, you're, and you know, you have a giant six inch hook on your rod, so you get stuck on everything. Yeah. Uh. But yeah, y'all caught, caught several kinds of fish. Okay. Y'all had the pike, and that's not going to be the biggest pike. That looks Heck like no. um, Tommy, Tommy Sunshine's got me beat on that. Yeah, Tommy's got the biggest pike. But I don't that's know the how first. they get so many pike, Robert. They must be prevalent up there because down here, one every once in a great while, and he like pulls them in by the dozen. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, my dad, my dad has told me stories like when we used to go swimming as kids. He'd be like, "Oh yeah, watch out for those pike," and I'd be like, "What is a pike? I don't even know what a pike is." He's like, "Oh, you'll know it. They're like the size of logs with teeth." And I'm like, "What? You're letting me go yeah. swimming with them?" Yeah, pretty much. They're, they're big, and they eat everything. Yeah, they after after seeing that one up close, I'm like, they are kind of a scary fish. Uh, I think uh, the muskie, I think a muskie is bigger uh, than a pike, really? but I'm not sure about that. Muskies get really one. big. Seeing seeing a lot of crappie, if that's what they are. Yeah. De we definitely but, get our fair share of largemouth and smallmouth bass. We all got you. You heard what I said, right? If if, yeah. if you take one of those black crappie and nobody else catches one, it's worth five bonus pounds. Awesome. And it looked like y'all caught a trout. Uh, it looked like y'all's first too. fish was a trout. Rainbow Whatever trout. Whatever kind of trout that. Huh? Pretty sure it was a rainbow trout. And he's telling yeah. you the word. <laughs> yeah, six inch, four ounce, Robert. It six inch, anything. four ounce. <laughs> if nobody else counts catches one that's bigger than that it counts for five pounds we do i, I do know a spot that's a really why, good spot for trout that's pretty much why i'm trying to get it all video documented so there's no question 
So yeah, it's been it's been exciting already. We're definitely getting our money's worth as far as the licenses go. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. It's it's fun, and uh, you know we try to try to do our best with shed wars, and and this just brings in a little more excitement. You know, there's something else to do. Um, it it's fun to go fishing. And the thing of it to me, Robert, is it gets people motivated to get out there. Like some people yeah. probably, eh, I could go fishing, but eh. You should. You see, go, uh, me, gear. And Chris wanted to, me and Chris wanted to fish this year anyway, and now it's like, okay, there's even more motivation to get out there. Well, one of my biggest regrets was was uh, quitting fishing and hunting whenever I got married and had kids, you know. Um, yeah. I just, there's too much going on, you know. Um, and I, I pretty much let it all go. Um, and been in years. It's hard, especially in a relationship. But I mean, I think that's what's great about me and Chris is we share the same interest. So yeah, there you go. I'd rather yeah, be out here with him fishing than sitting home uh, doing whatever. And what else can you really do besides watch YouTube? We do nothing been that way for a long time now. So, huge mortgage. So and oh, they're watching. Trying to keep up on the spread. So, well, Lewis, our, our routine right now is, you know, we garden during the day before work. Get everything situated in the garden. We go to work. Uh, we leave work and we go straight to a fishing hole. Fish for three or four hours, go home. Honestly, for- it's the best way to wind down from the day. It just gets you nice and relaxed, especially if you have a good trip. You're, you know, you're going home glowing. And yeah, you go right to bed because you're all pooped out yep. from tugging on those big fish. Yeah. Good stuff. I've got sure. a canoe that. I keep threatening to get out, and I want to do that. That'd be fun. I've been trying to convince Chris to get a kayak. But he he doesn't like kayak. <laughs> uh, they look like fun, and I've been in them before. But, you know, I'd rather have a canoe. There you carry more stuff. Yeah. The boat we have, though, I mean... Once we get it registered, it it can go straight to the water. Yeah, there you go. So, but the one thing me and Chris decided is where we're only harbor fishing. Yeah. We're not even going to put the big motor on it. We're just going to use a trolling motor and oars. Yeah. I'm telling you what, these guys that get out there. The, water. <laughs> the ones that get out there on the ocean with these kayaks. And they're out there deep sea fishing, you know. For, oh, and know, the whale is underneath their boat. These guys have done lost their mind. I mean, more power to them, and it's fun to watch. But, you know, they'll get out there, and dang, great big old sharks is knocking them yeah. over. And bumping the um, boat. I would have a heart attack. <laughs> I'm like, what do you expect is going to happen to you? you know? It looks like a big fish. <laughs> I mean, they're out there. Oh, it's so great. It's a beautiful day. Look, I've got a shark on there. I've got a shark. Oh, it's a big shark. Now he's biting me canoe. He's biting me kayak. And he's like, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. All the way back to the, <laughs> all the, way back to the bank. Oh, I've seen so many of those where bad that like, I've seen a humpback whale literally land on one. Mm-hmm. Like, people are crazy. That one guy... It, big uh, ocean. Little boats don't go in the big ocean. Yeah, they're, they're, they're little bitty boats. And it's like, nah, nah. There's too much thinking to eat you out there. Exactly. That, that one guy that one guy got uh, uh, swallowed by a whale. And, oh, yeah. Uh, I saw that. You know, that's, that's horrifying. <laughs> Could you imagine... Isn't there a story that's got well? like a that's got like yeah, a op oh no shit factor right there. You know, Chris goes, like, in, Chris goes, isn't there a child story about no, that? Moby, Moby 
Oh, well, there's a Bible story about Noah and the whale, but this guy out here was like um, Noah, his kayak, and a whale, you know. <laughs> He's kayaking. Did you hear that story? No. Guy not, no, there, not Noah and a whale, Jonah and a whale. <laughs> well, I guess he didn't get swallowed because he survived. Yeah, he, but, you know, he got, got spit got out. You know. <laughs> oh, what the hell is that? Oh, I can't even imagine. Did you find a neat bug? A neat bug? Yeah, you said, oh, what was that? No, I would have, you know, the, the whale would have been like, Puh, what is oh, that? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's reeling. Yeah. Oh, you're just reeling your bait in. Yeah. You got me excited. I'm trying to think what the scary is. I guess I've been in a canoe in Florida on a um, on a, uh, a brackish water pond. Yeah, it was connected to the ocean, you know, with the channel. Yeah, and I have had uh, alligators, uh, big alligators, going up underneath my canoe. Mm. Um, yeah, no. I, I love alligators, but I don't love to be close to one. <laughs> yeah, no, I love alligators. I love sharks. I just don't want to be in a situation to feed them. Yeah, I don't want to be face to face ever. No, no, no. I uh, admire. Want to get there. eaten? I mean, not no, on no. their ground. Okay. Be... I don't don't want to be in the it's water. Their backyard. Yeah, that's right. It's their dinner plate. Yeah. <laughs> You were showing up on it. And I'm like, no, that's not for me. <laughs> yeah, no. That's, oh man, I, I'm petrified of the ocean. That's why Chris is like, we're going out in a boat in the ocean. I'm like, can't we just go out in the boat on a lake? Like, lakes are cool. But, you know, I'm going to have every life jacket we own. <laughs> One for each limb. We'll be good. But it's calm like this. Like, these are the areas he's talking about going on a boat in. Like, this is really nothing. It's like being on a lake. But you get a big boat that comes by you, and you might think differently. Have a boat that we're in five feet wide. 18 feet long. Yeah, 18 by five feet. Like, that, he thinks that sounds big, Robert. <laughs> it does not sound big to me. That boat needs to be like 30 feet long and he he's used to it. He used to go out in pretty much a canoe. I went out in a 12 <laughs> foot bass boat. 12 foot bass boat. 12 foot bass boat, 12 foot bass boat armed with two wooden oars and a trolling boat. There you go. Well, yeah, so now like, you can get out on the ocean with some small boats, but I mean, you're going very far in the ocean typically. No, no. It, it was strictly in the harbor, and like you, you stayed away from the bridge, which is basically all the water outlet. So you stayed away from the bridge. If you were to go on the other side, you would have to go out like 400 yards away from the bridge because if you got caught in it, you're screwed. You're going for a ride. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I know how to navigate. You're going it. for a ride where the sharks are. <laughs> yeah. I definitely know how to yeah. navigate it. Not worried about it. Not at all. That's going to be like yeah. like an island out there. Uh, I was reading today that the uh, sturgeon are migrating up here. Sweet. It, you can't keep them. Uh, They're endangered. Damn. Yeah. Well, still, <laughs> if we catch a hundred pound sturgeon, that's five pounds of shed worth. <laughs> it, yeah. They, if you catch a, if you catch a sturgeon, up. if you catch a sturgeon, uh, people don't, people don't eat them normally because they're they're endangered. But you know. Oh, he's, um, saying, he's saying the five pounds for catching the the, the only yeah, but you, yeah, you can yeah, you can you can claim that you know because I opened it up uh, for for game fish and you know 
Um, anything is typically a food fish or a game fish. Now, people do catch sturgeon in some places, you know. Isn't that what they use? Get crazy with it. Isn't that the fish that they use for caviar? I think that's why it's so fished out. Yeah, caviar. The, yeah. Yeah. The right people but like the sturgeon. That's why it goes 10,000 bucks a pound. <laughs> And the yeah, idea is for it to be kind of like a scavenger hunt, you know, of all these different species. Um, that's kind of the idea behind the each species having a, that test your that test your skills too, because you have to use different stuff for different fish. So I mean, you're you're testing people's skills and knowledge and ability. Yeah. I'd like to see people out there catching uh, blue crabs and and uh, uh, catfish, uh, clams, you know, uh, whatever people going to eat, you know. But then we'll have people that will show up. And I said, well, I, I got a periwinkle. Does that count? I got, you know, I got like this tiny little snail or this whatever this and it's like are you gonna eat it like <laughs> yeah i don't count that you know no i mean I've that's like being just being like oh we're allowed to have this many ounces of seaweed a day yeah there's that's what i'm saying there's always somebody willing to push the ridiculous factor and that makes it a pain ridiculous. in the butt you know <laughs> yeah it's like co common things, you know, not something yeah. that. I mean, and yeah. what what is a per what is a periwinkle gonna weigh? Like, not even a gram. <laughs> exactly. You know, what about jellyfish? Well, I tell you what, you yeah. let's say you eat a jellyfish, okay? Ugh. But if it's a, if it's a tarpon or or any species, you know, that you catch normally that you hear about, then then that's cool. Yeah. Um, it, it, now, if uh, if Danny's down there and he catches him an alligator and wants to eat that, or can hey, farm if he gets him a turtle, you know, that's fine. Yeah. Periwinkle, snail, escargot. Oh yeah, I've seen on uh, what what's that show uh, called? Oh, um, like Swamp Wars or something like that. Really it's like a big alligator and crocodile thing down in the bayou. Uh, where they go and uh, hunt alligators or crocodiles or something like that. And I've seen on one of their shows, at the end of it, one of them is cooking, uh, I don't know, it was a decent-sized smaller one, I think, a few feet at least. It wasn't a baby, baby one, but it was a, it was a few feet, three or four feet at least. And they barbecued it up on bacon and, and put an apple, and yeah. it was all good looking. Hey, gator is good good food. I hear it's really good food. I've never had it, but I'll tell you what, if I was hungry enough, I would eat just about anything. Oh, it, it's about like chicken. You've had what? It's, it's tough, too, really tough. The parts I've had awesome. has been, um, been kind of kind of chewy. But it's real good. Chris says he he's had ostrich balls, and then he started chuckling, and he goes, "It wasn't actual ostrich balls; it was ostrich meatballs." <laughs> 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 Never had ostrich either. That's Don't look under their feathers. Yeah. The gear is saying he's he's going to have to go trout fishing. And I'd like to see that, you know. I would love to see that. Trout are gorgeous. They're one of my favorite fish. They're fun to catch, too. I, I know one thing. I have done fallen so far off of the algorithm that I, I might as well not exist anymore on YouTube. All this. See, that's what people don't understand. You know, about the, the shed wars and the stuff, the, the the videos that John and I make putting out there about the rules and all of this and all of that. It has no real value uh, except for, you know, everybody participating in shed wars. And it's just it's yeah. just dead. 
Um, it, it doesn't it doesn't boost your channel at all. It doesn't do nothing for it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so it's a loss, but it's, you know, what we do. And then I go through an efficient rodeo video on there. And now the thing don't know. Wait, 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 wait. Are you a gardener? Or yeah. are you a homesteader? <laughs> are you a fisherman? Yes. Or what are you? The same thing with us. Probably. The same thing with us, though, Robert. We're so diverse. Astrophotography that... and gardening. Yeah. It's like totally different spectrums, but. I don't know. I think you're going to get the people yeah, that watch that of... are genuinely interested. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, when I started my channel, it was a little bit about everything that I do around the house, right? Like, you know, like uh, everybody was staying at home, right? Yeah. And if, uh, like, I know I haven't been putting up very, I, I put out some some of the Shed War videos, right? If, if and when I can or the garden, because that seems to be the thing I'm doing right now, you know. But uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, I I got a I'm on a well here. I changed some filters and uh, drained out my pressure tank and my hot water tank. Right, I video taped yeah. it. I, I recorded it all and put it out on YouTube. Right, and uh, Lori from Lori's World. Uh, left me a message right you know yeah i think she said something but, uh thanks for uh the information or something like that on how to do it right so you know it uh i helped somebody out right you know that's the biggest it's all stuff people need to know whether they know it or not <laughs> yeah well you know like for for me at least you know uh if somebody can do it, uh, this is me included, you know what I mean? Uh, why go out and spend the money? You know what I mean? Um, yeah, me and Chris. Because I got a... Yeah, like I got a water guy that comes in once a year and uh, changes my UV light. And I spend about 300 bucks on the whole deal for about 20 minutes worth of work. And I think it's about... 200 bucks for the light in it and 100 bucks for the guy's time, right? Um, yeah, it's something I can do, but those UV lights they're so finicky and, and uh, they're very easily breakable. Um, so I, I won't bother changing it, right? Just have him come in and boom, I'm good for a year, yeah, you know? it's probably like the whole headlight but thing. The filters and all yeah, and for him to come and change the filters month after month after month, no thanks. I, I don't got that kind of money. I don't got, you know, I, he can go somewhere else and then change somebody else's filters. Thank you. You know? Yeah. You know, like uh, at my place here, I've got a bunch of spruce, logs, and cedars, right? And, uh, so I've cut down some trees on my property, and there's some big ones that uh, that need to come down. I got to get a, a a tree guy to come in because I'm not insured to do that in case if it hits one of the the neighbors' places, right? Um, yeah. And I've cut down trees before, and I mean like not not small ones too. I mean ones that uh, widow makers that if it goes the wrong way, you're done. Um, yeah. One way or the other, right? But I'm not going to take somebody's house out or, or a chunk up there, right? See, it happen a lot around so here it, with people it, trying to do that stuff. Yeah, well, whether it's there, here, or wherever, it's idiocy, right? Oh, yeah, I can cut down a tree, and, and but there's so much more involved, right, that just started up a chainsaw and taking it to that tree, you know? Um you got to think about how it's going to fall, which way, this, that. It's like a thousand and one things, right? Yep. <laughs> and uh, because it can kill you. It can kill you just like faster than you, you know what can happen, right? And it, it could take out something or another. And people don't realize that, that a tree up top 
might be heavier on one side. Oh, yeah, I can get it to go this way, and it ain't. You know what yeah. I mean? I've had trees go the entire the opposite way. You know, like entirely opposite way. And thinking, I'm thinking, like, how the hell did that happen, right? It's just the way it happens, right? And, yeah. and that's where the ADC becomes happening, right? I didn't think that would happen. And I remember, like, and I, I did this out in farmlands. The only thing I had to really worry about, and it was very easily fixable, right? was fence line, yeah. right? Most of them are wire or electrical, right? And yeah. uh, farms had some supplies there. And a, sorry, man, I, I think the tree landed on the fence. I had no choice, right? No, oh, it's okay. Here, here's some materials, a couple of staples to put the fence up, back up to the post. And uh, you, you need uh, the go. electrical wire. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> about it couple of hours later, boom, done, right? And I've had people walk up to me and say, hey, I need this tree cut down right by my house, 30 feet from the house. I said, nope, ain't gonna do it. Because the tree looked know. taller and and it like, taller than it, it, it was taller than the distance from whatever it was near, right? I'm not gonna yeah. take out your, your house or, or that, that or the other. I can, and I've got a company that I know and I've worked for before, and I'll recommend them before I even come close to saying yes. You know, and I've done that before to people because I've got, I've had no insurance, right? So the best I can do is cut them down in, in fields, right? Yeah. You know. I don't mess with trees. Chris does on occasion, but not me. I see movement happening out yeah, it's, there. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's it, it, you got what you're looking at and what you're doing when it comes to the, those bigger trees, right? And and uh, but we're starting to get jumps. It's so I don't know who it is. Better get that sandwich ready in case you. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. Need it. Need another flex. I need a drink. Yeah, it's almost empty. Well, at least fishing is better than work, <laughs> even if you're not catching anything. That's right. Anything's better than work. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I need a drink, too, says gear. But the fridge is too far away. Oh, thank you, wifey. <laughs> Oh, you broke the station. I didn't break it. It's magnetic. Man. All right. There it is. Now I got to adjust that a little bit again. All right. You yeah, guys should have brought some nice green stuff to smoke up there while you're fishing. Lewis, are you serious? You don't know me yet. <laughs> yeah, Lewis. Um, that that that's already taken care of. I've been partaking in the shadows. Oh, I think we need to let this rest for a few. Let the tide come in a little bit more, and uh, yeah. Start catching some fish in a few. I was thinking about getting a drink, but then I need a beer. I went to the sweet tea. 
Yeah. I don't know anything either, Bell Loop. Melatonin and Dimetap will help them to sleep. You know, none of that stuff works for me. Gina will sit there and um, throw a concoction at me of like valerian root, um, chamomile, other things, melatonin, whatever it is. And she tries to put me to sleep and it just never works. I'll sit there for hours like, well, that was a waste. She's weird like that. I'm gonna help you get some rest, man. Oh, yeah. I was in I was in Grand Valley. Uh, what night was it? The other night, I can't remember what it was. And keep in mind, up here in Canada, smoking the green stuff is legal, and you can buy it and grow it and whatever else. In Grand Valley, I'm in Grand Valley there. Uh, doing a couple of things and uh, grabbing a couple of things. And lo and behold, there's a pot shop there. Yeah. So it was, it was just weird to see it. Really weird see, to see we, it. We're, we're so used to it because, like, it's illegal here in New Hampshire. But, like, there are... Five, six, there are six smoke shops in our town because it borders yeah. Massachusetts. And once you cross into Massachusetts, um, five minutes down the road, you find a humongous warehouse where they grow and produce marijuana. They also yeah. create tinctures and edibles and all that kind of stuff upstairs in the laboratory. Then you go another five minutes down the road and you have a distribution center. Then you go 10 minutes up the road and you have another distribution center. And then you take the corner yeah. and you go 15 minutes down the road and there's another one. And that just keeps repeating and repeating and repeating, dude. But as soon as you cross yeah. into New Hampshire, it's like nothing. You can get a nice, beautiful glass bong or a pipe and everything else. But, you know, just as long as you say it's for tobacco, yes, this, this $400 yeah. bong is for tobacco. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I remember living in Orangeville, which is about half an hour away from me. And uh, there's this, uh, it's not a smoke, but it sort of is and sort of not. It's an alternative store. Uh, sells flags, a lot of that uh, pot stuff, bongs, pipes, scales, hmm. uh, stuff like that, right? It's what the hmm. kids like to wear these, these days too, right? So uh, huh. I'm in there, and this is before it all became legal up there. Had to use, yeah, bong. Yeah, got, got, I use it to smoke uh, tobacco. Yeah. Right? Couldn't yeah. use the word weed or pot or anything in that store just in case there was a cop in there. Yeah. They, so that's the same thing at um, one of our stores. It's called Up and Smoke. And you can yeah. go in there. They also sell a lot of um, knives and axes and swords and all medieval. that stuff. Medieval stuff. And um, you can go in there and you can you can say anything. Literally anything. You can say, your mama is an effing you-know-what and she likes to suck you-know-what every day and blah, 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 blah. And they're like, yeah, okay, whatever. But if you go in there and say weed... They say, get out right now. Now, get out. No, yeah. seriously, you cannot You cannot shop here today. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. it's so weird. It's so weird. Well, the setup of that place is even weird. They're literally right next door. You can walk from one to the other. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it's an adult store. And yeah. I mean adult, like naked women. Yeah, walking leather around. and lace. You can go pay these women to give you a lap dance and all this stuff. So, yeah, yeah it's pretty much like one yeah. store. Yeah. It's, it's a great part of town, let me tell you. It's always bumping, I'll tell yeah. you that. Yeah. Ugh. This town sucks nowadays. Go say went to shit. This town just really sucks. I, I sound like my parents. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's always been there since we've been children, but like. Not to the extreme it is now, though. It's different now. It's like it's always always bumping there's always multiple you can drive by there at like two o'clock in the morning and there's still people in there yeah it's i don't know whatever whatever gets their jollies off literally yeah (laughs) see belt likes naked women no yeah yeah, absolutely they will take you to a room with a lovely window and you can sit on one side and they're on the other (laughs) Leather and lace, question mark. Amish sex furniture, yes, question Q. mark. Yes, Q. A shushing going back to playing with my meat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. It is pretty much a, yeah. You might, Around here, you might as well say an Amish sex store. Yeah. But seriously, if you think about it, like <laughs> our town consists of fireworks stores sex shops and bong shops that's pretty much <laughs> our town nowadays and shopping malls and shopping malls oh yes and shopping malls like that's all our town is nowadays it's disgusting series wow dude it really is and then the next town over it's like you're going back into the 1950s it's such a contrast. It's so weird. Like really nice fancy houses, top notch everything. And then you go into Seabrook and it's like, welcome to the bong capital of New Hampshire. <laughs> Even though we can't smoke <laughs> anything out of them. Yeah. Ridiculous. Anyway. <laughs> Dips, chains, and whips. No candle wax on the nipples or anything like that. What movie is that from? It's close to the perfect quote. I have no idea. We, we don't that sounds it. like a Bill Ingle joke. I am not sure. Ah, belt loop. It sounds so familiar. Like... Yeah, not so much. It sounds like a Bill Ingle joke. <laughs> you know? Here says Amish toys are made of wood. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yes they are. What is in a mess? What's up, man? What are you doing? Don't, don't freak in. I was just reading to make sure I didn't miss anything. I'm going to go bait my rod and try something. Oh, yeah? I'm going to go try my honey bowl now that it's filling in. It's not quite there yet. I can walk down there, dear. If you dare. Yeah, have fun. It's flat right there. Oh, I remember. <laughs> I was working with my old man. Uh, it's going back like Almost 20 years ago, I was working for my old man, and uh, I was getting a ride in from a buddy of mine, and this guy's like the same age as my dad, roughly, and uh, married guy, wife, couple of kids, and uh, maybe as a third night kind of thing, and then... Uh, so one day his wife's going away for the weekend with the kids and he's going fishing. Guy knows I smoke pot. Not only does he know I smoke pot, I smoke pot at work too, right? Well, I'm working for the old man. So he's yeah. bugging me and he goes, give me a couple of joints, right? So yeah. yeah. Okay, fine, whatever, right? Not even thinking about it, right? Not even thinking the fact that he hasn't had a joint in like over 20 years. 
And this is on a Friday after work. I give it to him, right? And uh, <laughs> he picks me up Monday morning. He's like, oh, man. I, quote, I get on the boat, everything. Great, whatever. Smoke half of a joint that you rolled me, buddy. Yeah. I had to put it out. And yeah. so I get back to the car. I smoke the other half of the joint. I had to take a nap. The stuff is so much stronger than it was 20-some years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it is so true. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I'm, I'm just sitting there laughing because I know the next words out of his mouth are, I don't know how you do it all day, buddy. Yeah, uh, Lewis, I'm the same way, but I also don't go, like, potent stuff. Like, you know, I'm, I'm usually less than 20% THC. That's that's yeah. more than enough for me, you know. They, they come out with a 30, 35, and 40, and it's like, are you freaking kidding me, man? Like, I'd be, you know, unconscious. That's wheelchair like, stuff. It really is. Seriously. Like, Gina does the edibles and, like, microdosing. That's that's just, you know, how she likes to do it nowadays. And she has these raspberry jelly chews. And they're five milligrams each one. And, you know, she'll have one and she'll be good for a few hours. Just enough to take the edge off, you know. Each hey, one I'm of us have our vices. Whether, uh, what's that, Robert? I'm going to jump down, Chris. I was I was headed for bed whenever y'all popped on. And I've been yeah, on I... an hour. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump down. I'll still be in the chat, but I'm going to start getting ready for bed here. Yeah, no, I wish there was more action here, buddy, but, you know, it's how it goes. But at least we're here shooting the shit, having a good time, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to I need, I'm trying to get to bed earlier and earlier. Um, I need, who am I kidding? I haven't done it yet. <laughs> yeah, but that's yeah. the goal, is to get in the bed at a decent time. Um, but, I would uh, hey, love to start doing that, but, you know, we just can't. Y'all got you a know. different uh, schedule, and it's completely natural for y'all. Um, yeah, exactly. But, uh, I hope yeah. you get something. I'll hang out for a little while, but I'm going to jump off the panel and, you know. Yeah, no I can't, problem, buddy. Thank you, you know. for jumping up. Yep, yeah. Gina says thank you for coming up. Yeah, yeah, good luck. Gina, you catch one bigger than him. <laughs> She's trying to right now. All right, we'll see y'all. Bye, right. Lewis. Yeah. Talk to you later, Homestead, Chris. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's... Uh, uh, what's that, Lois? I think there's two major... I think there's two, like, out of all the strains of, of weed there is, I think there's two uh, different types, right? Uh, one of yeah. them is a sativa weed. And it's a less stronger one, um, one that you can basically pretty much function on, you know, smoke a joint and carry on about your day, right? Now, like, yeah, that, smoke a few joints real, yeah, and carry on, st- right? Sativa, sativa, or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. And then there's the, the other, other one. one. And then there's the um, other one. I don't know what it's called. But it's the wheelchair the stuff. Indica. Yeah. So the best way to remember that, dude, is uh, Indica is in the couch. (laughs) Like, you're you're asking, and here's the funny part, like, I use Indica, and because of my ADD, I kind of have a counteraction to it. So I'm very, very productive off of Indica. That's all I smoke, and obviously you see the homestead, my friend. You see us doing what we do. Like, yeah, I don't know. I guess that's that's just my my issue, the ADD that I have. Yeah, yeah. Same here. I I don't know how to put it into words, but uh, 
but I don't smoke weed. It's it's like I'm all over the place, right? But exactly. uh, when I do it, it uh, I'm not Focus. all I'm still all over the place, but not all over the place at the same yeah. time, right? I'm able to. Oh, I got this to do, that to do, and it gets done, right? Exactly. You can hone in on specific items as opposed to, um, you know, chipping off little sections of. What's up? Oh, Gina's stuck and the tide's coming in, so. <laughs> Fishing rod. Okay, I'm gonna have to take the light. All right, I'll be Lewis. You got the show for a second. All righty then. I got the show. All right, Chris is gone to go and get uh, Gina's line off the hook there, off the rocks. He's getting her a life preserver because the tide's coming in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chris, go save her, buddy. <laughs> Stop tickling her, Chris. Get her out of there, buddy. Get her the life preserver. We're coming. <laughs> Stop tickling her, Chris. <laughs> He's cracking up over there. Get her the life Got it unstuck. Oh man, that was bad. It was I found a flat spot over there where I could actually get my bait out far enough in the water, but there's lots of crabs right now, and one of them decided to uh try to run with my bait as I was bringing it in and it got under a rock. <laughs> And I almost fell like four times, and I literally would have been covered in mud. Yeah. <laughs> and it would have been hilarious. And it's not the good kind of mud either. It smells like dirty <laughs> old save, fish. Save her, Chris, <laughs> says Robert. <laughs> oh, that's no, just nasty, save, man. I had to save my dirty rod. Fish. That's what it was. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's what marsh water it smells like. It's just dirty old fish. And the crabs like chewed that. And all the way Chris to the is head. down there with the flashlight. He's like, "Oh my God, there's hundreds of crabs." There down really here. is. There's hundreds of crabs down there. Oh yeah, when when I I don't know nothing about fish and this and that and the other, right? But I've watched a fair bit of movies, right, where they're underwater or whatever, right? And the biggest thing that I I've seen in the movies is, and I'm sure that this is true to an extent in real life. Is uh, oh, hold on, night two, love you too. Homestead Aquarius had said it, something to the effect that uh, because everything's so calm and peaceful underneath at night, um, that's when a lot of stuff comes out, right? At, at the same time, it's a different world mm -hmm. at night. The, the, the prey fish are moving around. Well, I can't say that. It's more the bigger fish that start moving around. And the prey fish kind of yeah. hide and try, try not to get eaten. Yeah, it's a different world at night than it is at day. Low, low tide is a different world anyway, just because everything is now closer to surface and or land. <laughs> so, like... You know, an hour ago, I wouldn't have had to worry about a hundred crabs stealing my bait and trying to run away with it. But yeah, if you shine your light down there right now, I guarantee all you see is eye shine oh, from yeah. all of those crabs. Well, you see the, the ground moving. 
I could hear him. I thought I was going crazy. <laughs> no, I'm not. Or we are going to try to get your rod stuck in. No, I'm going to actually fish. It's open. I should go for the middle. Oh. Yeah, he's definitely better at reeling in than I am. Hey, the moon's starting to come out. Help the yeah, the moon's starting to come out. So you might be able to see a little better. Maybe have. Yeah, maybe the fish too. Yeah. yeah, usually when the moon comes out, the fish start coming out. That f I think that's why the fishing was so good the other night. It was right after the full moon. And the tide was like super, super high because it was a full moon. There's like no current right now at all. There's like a little eddy over there. Is there crickets where you guys are? Yes, there are. All around us. Okay. Okay, I thought I left the window open. <laughs> well, at least it's a com at least it's a common sound for you too. Somebody was saying that the other day. I haven't seen a cricket in a long in the longest time. I was like, just come up here. You'll see thousands of them. Dustin. Dustin oh, Dustin and I Courtney. Hear them at night. I mean, really, that's all you can hear here is crickets. At our house, it's crickets and frogs. He's plotting his next. Yeah, so, yeah, so pretty soon I'm getting material slowly together. And I'm going to be making a video on that chicken coop to start of it. Yeah, Chris is going to be doing the same hopefully in the next week or two. We got a we found a bunch of really nice pallets. So we're going to borrow borrow the truck and go pick up some pallets and start. Well, Lewis, the dimensions that I'm thinking it's going to be a probably 6 feet wide, 6 feet deep. And four feet tall. Oh my god, do you really have a fish? No. Nope. He started having something there. Um, yeah, that's that's gonna be the size of it, man. Six by yeah, six by I four. got uh, Yeah, I've been getting materials like uh, I got a, a buddy of mine gave me a uh a, you know for the box of a truck, you got those hard tops. To cover the back <laughs> of your truck there in the box. There we go, Gear. I that is a plan. Gear says we need to buy some really big chickens and put them in the greenhouse. Because they'll kill the rats. Yeah. <laughs> get some of those Jersey Giants. <laughs> those yeah, things sure. get... yeah, that'll work. Have you ever seen the size of those Jersey Giant chickens? Lewis, have you seen them? Uh, to me, they they look like velociraptors. They're like, you know, to me, probably up past my knee tall. Yeah, they they're prob big birds. probably like sound like booster chickens. The so chickens on steroids. Oh, they're bred that way. I think they're mainly used as meat birds, but I'm not positive. I'm trying to become a chicken expert, but I'm not there yet. Oh, I, I've been around the, the meat industry for 30 some years. I'm no expert. I, I, I can cut a chicken, give me about 10 chickens, right, to, to shine off the rust. And I can cut a whole chicken up with my eyes closed. You know what I mean? But still yeah. doesn't make me an expert. You know what I mean, uh, on them. 
Have you ever, have you done the whole skinning process and all that before? Yeah. It, uh, a lot of it's not the nice. ring and all that. I hear that chickens are really, are really yucky smelling when you're going through that process. Uh, I don't it, On the kill floors, it can, it can be really uh, stinky. Um, but uh, anything after that, uh, as long as it's kept in the proper conditions um, and it doesn't go off, it, it's not really stinky until it goes, starts going off. You know how you, you leave chicken on the counter for, say, a day? Lewis, like the, the process of um, how they boil it to get the feathers off and all that stuff. Okay. I heard, yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard that yeah. is like horrible. So yeah, Amanda Evan Evanson, the Happy Hippie Homestead, is in here. Hello, Amanda. Uh, she said, "Hi, everyone. Sorry, I dozed off for a bit. My neighbor has Jersey Giants. I have Bantams, so hers look especially giant to me. <laughs> Bantams are so pretty, though." Why does her channel sound? It's the Happy Hippie Homestead. Yeah. I don't think this is the first time she's been here. Yeah. We watch a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people. So, Lewis, have you decided on what kind of chickens you're getting? Meat birds. Uh, meat birds? Preferably mm -hmm. meat ones. Laying ones and meat ones. You can get dual purpose ones too that are good for both. They have dual purpose. So yeah. they're they're great at laying, but they're also big enough that they're great for meat too. Yeah, probably those ones. Because it'd be nice uh, to, to have the, the eggs there and then uh, be able to, to have a rooster and, and, uh, Hatch the, the eggs and stuff like that for meat. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like and, and, the price, and Lewis, the thing, price of the thing I'm thinking right now, you with the market for chicken the way it is, if you can produce your own chickens, you're probably going to start yeah. making a pretty penny here soon. Um, oh, yeah. You know, yeah. Well, it, uh, to be able to sell it, it's. Uh, I remember my dad having a crown and a number on uh, a lot of his products. He had to, right? Um, yeah. And that just means he's governmentally inspected and they can track it back to his plant when he was uh, still working, right? Yeah. Um, now, if I were to be doing this at home or anybody else, and I, I see it around here a, a lot. Because um, a lot of farmers, what they'll do is uh, um, have their uh, breed their animals, and they might go and send. Oh, I don't know, say uh, like a, a trailer that you can hook up to a pickup truck, um, and and load it up of chickens or pigs or sheep or cows, and it, and, it, and it'll vary on what uh, you're breeding and uh, how big your trailer is for the truck and that, right? Um, take it up to the slaughterhouse and they'll slaughter them, skin them, do whatever they need to do and package it up and have it uh, brought back home and then they'll yep. freeze it and then sell out their door. At least it's it's uh, been governmentally inspected when it was slaughtered, butchered and packaged, right? So that there is yeah. absolutely uh, no... Uh, I don't want to say no, unless if their freezer shut down, you know what I mean? And then it's just common sense that this should not be sold. Um, yeah. There is no uh, repercussions upon them. No lawsuits, no this, no that in case mm -hmm. of, right? Um, because uh, the government inspection, it, it, it's not like it was 30 years ago, right? Where, oh, it, it's going to take us five, like 10 guys to to, to load up five trucks and you're, you know, you put up like, like six skids to, to a truck and you're loading up five trucks, right? Every skid you pull yeah. out of the cooler, 
it's going to sit there for three hours, right? You can't do that anymore. It's got to be all temperature regulate, you know, so it, it's, it's, uh, what we know now today isn't like what it was 30 years ago. So it, it's pretty stringent. It's pretty strict. It's, uh, you know, you see a lot of these food recalls, right? Somebody eats yeah. something, right? Salmonella poisoning or, or this or that or the other, right? Companies yep. can be sued for millions. For millions. Oh, I'm sure. You know, uh, oh, yeah. Like, I've had salmonella poisoning and uh, I've had to be hospitalized once for it. Just working in the meat industry, you get some in your eyes, get some in your mouth. Yada yada yada, sure. right? It's gonna it's happen bound when you're to happen. Yeah, it is being a cop, right? You know, you're bound to get shot at some point or another, and if you don't, you're lucky, right? You know, yeah, or stab. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, but still, very lucky, right? Uh, or or not to use your gun, right? So it's uh, bound to happen, but it's still, it's not nice. Know, and, and uh, to be sick and out of work for about a week or so, you know, that's a week's wages, right? What do you or Chris make a week, right? Somebody's got to be yeah. held accountable for that. Yep. You know, I can't imagine salmonella is fun to deal with. Amanda, oh, thank you so uh, much for coming anyway. in and see us live. We appreciate it. <clears throat> So I was looking up the yeah, dual purpose uh, foods. Yeah. So you got um, Orpingtons are in that group. Plymouth Rocks, the Rhode Island Red, Wine Dots, Australorps, Delaware, Sussex. There's a whole giant list of dual purpose. Yeah. So you got you have a lot of options and. See, the way I'm thinking of going is I want chickens that I can actually, you know, handle and aren't going to attack me when I walk into the coop. I'm really thinking about going with the Orpingtons just because they are really good egg layers, like pretty much consistently an egg a day. And they're yeah, very yeah. calm. They're very calm, sweet birds. Yeah, yeah. What you want, uh, as long as they're not really attacking me too bad, I, I don't want to say I don't care, right? But as long as they're not really yeah. badly attacking me, you know what I mean? But they can defend themselves from, like, say, rats or something, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, or the smaller stuff, right, that actually my dog can't get at, um, like mice or rats or whatever like that. And then my dog can get the rats because it'd be the next thing up from rats, mice, or coons, skunks, porcupines, uh, stuff like that, right? And, and coyotes. And my dog, I know the, the dog, my last dog was a great Pyrenees, and, and having him, I know that, that uh, with him, not a problem, not, no, no real big uh, problem on. Uh, Defending uh, livestock, right? So I know with my dog now being part Great Pyrenees, part Miramar, um, and him being like nine months and almost 100 pounds now, right? He yeah, won't have a, a problem big... defending. Uh, the, yeah, well, he's, he's only going to get a bit. He, two years before he's done growing, right? And that's when he's fully growing. Grown, right? Probably going to be he's 150, to... 150 pounds. Yeah, he's he's going yeah, to be tank. My last dog, he was 140 pounds at about two and a half years old. You know, wow. so his other was about 100 in, in the in the springs was about 160, 165 pounds. But in the fall, um, he dropped down to about 130, 135 pounds from being in the fields all summer long, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, my guy, he's going to be, because he's not a full great Pyrenees, um, I'm probably looking about a, a big dog, 
guaranteed, right? But it's just a matter of how big because he's unmixed, right? So, yeah, you know, uh, could mean he's bigger, could uh, mean he's smaller. Yeah, like, no, yes, yes, uh, he could be a bit smaller, right? I'm not 100% sure yet, but uh, he can, he, he, he's, he already defends the backyard, he barks and stuff already, so it, it's pretty good. I right? was gonna so, say, but at, at 100 pounds, Lewis, you don't have to worry about a whole lot, <laughs> even if he stayed yeah, the yeah. size he is now. That's a big dog, yeah. Yeah. The biggest dog that we had was our um, American Bulldog. He was about 120 pounds in his old age. That was being, you know, yeah. well-fed and well-treated and fat and lazy. <laughs> but Robert says that Buff Orpingtons keep coming up as number one for me. And Robert, I have to say, they're one of my favorite chickens. It's one of the chickens my neighbor has. And she will literally come over and hang out with us in the garden. She's a sweetheart. The Buff Orpington. The blondie. Yeah. Not the one that... Yeah, not the barred rock that rips Chris's leg apart. I hear that the uh, barred rocks are really good at taking care of themselves, though. Are we getting anywhere with the cows? Yes. We're going to be out of bait before the fish start biting. No, I haven't even gotten into the package yet. Oh, that's where you threw it. I was going to be like, rings, there's rings. Yeah, but with those, the great Pyrenees, the, the younger you get them, the better it is. Yeah, are, are they easy but to train, hard to train? They're, they're stubborn. Uh, the worst thing about them is that they're barking dogs, especially at night, and they shed a lot. Um, yeah. But if you've got livestock, um, you know what I mean, whether it be chickens, pigs, sheep, cattle, horses, whatever, that's what you want is them barking at night. Um, yeah, so keep simple, the coyotes. They're not either... Yeah, they'll keep them at bay because they're a big dog, right? Like, and you can hear their bark, right? And how yeah. uh, they, they can tell that it's a big dog, right? So they're not going to come around unless if they're like, uh, there's like 10 of them at least, you know? Um, yeah. So, I've, I've, and I've even never. I've heard a pack of coyotes, but I've never seen more than one, which obviously they don't want you to see more than one. But you can hear them when they yeah, run off you, you might, talking to the other ones. You might see two or three at the most, at the most. But um, yeah. even at the that, other ones, are, the the other ones are waiting in the background. For yeah, that one to be the like, rest of them I are, got a meal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the rest of them aren't too far because when I was living in Grand Valley, um, the, my landlord there had about a thousand head of sheep. And on my side of the street, he, um, for the first couple of years, he had some lives, some of the sheep on my side of the street. And yeah. uh, I'd be up half the night. Uh, a few times throughout the year, right? And uh, because of the coyotes, and I'm like, but and I, he knew I'd call him up in the middle of the night, and he'd wake up. His buddy, get your gun out here now! Got the coyote. They're they're doing this. They're doing that. And uh, the first time I ever called him up and said, "Hey, this something's going on out here," and he he uh, came out, fired off his gun a few times, and they all left. And he goes. Uh, Thanks, but um, by the sounds of what you were explaining to me, is one was sitting up here at, at by the house, getting the dog's attention, while the other ones were sitting across the field until they got that one got the dog away. Gosh, yeah, to yeah, go get it. 
Oh yeah. Hey Bob. So Bob. We are trying to night fish. The tide isn't really cooperating right now. It is. It's hey, getting Bob. better. But yes, that's why you see us in the pitch black. Yes. I'm in the distance. Kind of. Am I blocking the light? No. The light's just dying. No, but I can come up on the camera real spooky like. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> We're talking about coyotes. Yeah, yeah. I, I can hear you all talking. I'm just listening. Yeah, Gear says one coyote shows up to lure dogs and cats off and then the pack attacks. Yeah. That's really creepy, honestly. Well, as creepy as it is, believe it or not, you know, it, it's, uh, it is their domain, right? And uh, yeah. they eat too, right? And, and uh, when you live out in the country, right? It's like us hunting, right? The same yeah. way. But we're just, we're, we're more sophisticated at it, you know? Yeah. They got to do it to survive. I get it. It's, yeah. It's the idea of having a pack waiting in the uh, the trees that gets to me. Oh, being in the, being a lumberjack, you know, my, 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 my worst. And I, I, I'd be out that I see half this stuff half the time, you know, and I, I always had my shotgun with me, right? Just in case I ran into a rabbit coyote, right? But uh, my biggest fear was uh, having a tree land on me and the coyotes not being too far. Yeah, that would up my suck. Scent of blood. That would suck oh, really yeah. bad. Yeah, because I was yeah. out there by myself most of the time, right? And uh, yeah, you pretty much work alone, have to right? Yeah. It's not so much bringing the, the my gut, my shotgun up there. It it was the fact I had to, to stay on top of myself to make sure I was cutting down the trees properly, right? So they wouldn't land on me. Yeah, because I know that they'd be sneaky. They're they're sneaky that way, right? Like working on a hundred acre farm or a seventy acre farm where you're in some breed areas, right? You're in their home. Yeah. Yeah, Bob, coyotes eat a lot of cats and dogs in our area, too. Oh, yeah. Chicken oh, yeah, as sure. well. Yeah. Whatever they can get their teeth on, they're not picky. Yeah, no. It's what they do, thankfully, right? Like thankfully, because we're we're closer to what you would call in town, it's it's constantly active. Um, we only have one area, and it's a very small area of woods behind our house. But believe it or not, we get so much wildlife through there. Fortunately, I've never, I've never heard a coyote close to home. It's always been when, when we've been at work, and the same thing you're saying, like secluded areas where there isn't a lot of people, and they got plenty of woods to run. Yeah. Me and, Chris, yeah. me and Chris walked up to unlock a building one night, and Chris goes, I think I see a tail in the bushes. And I'm like, oh, it's probably just a skunk. I kept walking. And, uh, yeah, it wasn't a skunk. It was a coyote. He came out of the bushes, and I'm, like, slowly backing up, staring it in the eyes. We got in the car, and that coyote stayed there for 15 minutes just staring us down. It's like, okay. Yeah, you're that, and I am He's sure looking you at know his next Lewis. meal. Yeah, and I'm sure you know, Lewis, the coyotes that are up north now aren't just coyote. Like, this thing was massive. It was part wolf, part coyote. Oh, uh, I could see part dog, part coyote, because that's been known to happen, especially up oh, there. Oh, you got Lewis, you gotta look that up. Especially up in your area, they are saying that the wolf population is now breeding with the coyote population because numbers are down. Uh, Seriously, coyotes, timber wolf. 
maybe the coyote population might be down up here. They're open season no, not, up not, here. Not so much. Not so much the coyote population that's down. It's the wolf population. So the wolves are breeding with the coyotes because they don't have females of their own species to breed with. They're trying to keep their species alive any way they can. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I understand that. Uh, but from the hunters I've I've talked to, at least, uh, um, the wolves, the coyotes, and the wolves do not get along because uh, the wolves are much more. They're, they're bigger than the coyotes and because they both hunt meat um, yeah, stuff like yeah. that Amanda's saying it too the, um, it's there are coyote wolves genetically here in New York yeah I've heard they're yeah, here I and I'm telling, you, I'm telling you the coyote yeah, that I, yeah. I know what a coyote looks like this was way bigger than a coyote ever thought of being and it had like that really bushy wolf tail. Yeah. Well, I, I just saying like like if it like because the hunters right, um, the, the the wolf's more dominant right, so than the coyote right, so it it it'd be very rare and it'd probably be something very new, you know, very new. Well, um, I'm telling you, Lewis, I want to say check that, into. Right? Google that crap. Oh, you will thinking, be surprised. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not saying it, it wouldn't happen. I'm just saying it, it would be, I could see it happening with a dog before a wolf, right? I I don't think the coyotes have much of a choice in the matter, you know, with the wolf being so much bigger. Oh, no. If it's well, gonna, if it's gonna mate yeah. if it's gonna mate with a female, there is nothing that coyote's really gonna be able to do. Oh yeah. Except be there and take it. Yeah. <laughs> if you go wolf, you never go back. Yeah, once you go wolf, you never go back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she says Leahy are massive and wicked intelligent and not as afraid of humans as wolves are. Yeah, Q says we have them here in eastern Washington, the mix. The wolves will mate with the female coyotes because they can dominate them. It's happening very often. And, and yeah, I can see that happening. It's because the wolf population is being killed off again. Like, you remember back a while ago, they started bringing back wolves into all of these state parks and stuff. They were breeding them in captivity and then releasing them into the wild. Well, the reason the wolf population got extinguished in the first place was because of hunters, farmers, you know, all those people that didn't want yeah. wolves eating their livestock. So they started killing them again and they got to the and now they're getting back to that point when they're starting to be endangered again. So they're desperate. They're not finding females in their own pack. So they're going elsewhere coyotes <laughs> and they're impregnating them and yeah they, they start their own little pack together it's crazy yeah once the pack started then there's nothing you yeah. can really do about it right but because it's the same thing with the the dogs and the coyotes right and how that's done right they'll if there's a like a male dog in with the herd they'll send a, a female coyote to attract that male dog, and that's how it happens, right? Yep. Um, and it's vice, and vice versa. So I, I can see it happening more, but I'm not saying it, it wouldn't happen. But they're like the coyotes and the wolves, right? They're they're enemies, right? So I just have a bit of a hard time seeing it, right? Like happening, but you, you never know, right? Oh, so Bob is saying the wolf population in Washington is increasing. Now, Bob, I have to ask you, has that happened in the past couple of years, if you get what I'm saying, while everybody was at home, not going anywhere? 
Because you, you got to remember, for the past two years, we've been inside. And Mother Nature has actually been able to do what Mother Nature is supposed to do. And yeah, Amanda says, even the polar bears and the grizzlies are crossbreeding due to population loss. And it's, yeah, and it's lost. The crossbreed, rip, I can't even say it, ripizzlies and growlers depending on which is the mom or which is the dad. I've seen that too on the Discovery Channel and that. If you've never seen a polar bear, grizzly bear, thing is a monster. Think about that. It, they tell you with um, black bears, if it's black attack, which means make yourself big, scary looking, make a lot of noise. If it's a, if it's a brown bear, grizzly, you're supposed to lay down and play dead. But if it's a polar bear, it don't matter what you do. That thing's eating you. <laughs> you can play dead. Yeah. You can yell at it. It's going to eat. So imagine a grizzly bear crossed with a polar bear. The size of it alone. I mean, that thing's gonna, yeah, you're done. Its paw is going to be bigger than half your body. Thank you. Oh, it started before. Well, I mean, it's good, but it's not good at the same time. Like, I get it from both angles. It's great that they're repopulating, but it's not so great for humans. Yeah, because the wolves, they, they normally take out the coyotes, right? Because they're, they're so much bigger. Telling you, Lewis, you got to look them up. Just look at the pictures of them; they're crazy. Oh, I'm not. I'm not saying you know. It's just I'm talking like because uh, it's just I understand that that the populations of certain things are going down or up or whatever, right? But uh, oh, it's so almost, Amanda is saying. <clears throat> Amanda said. Sorry, my eyes are bad. I mistyped and misspelled. Sometimes I had a husky wolf, husky wolf mix as a kid. They are illegal here now, but they were intentionally bred. Lovely. Yeah, I, that I know about, like the dogs and the, and the wolves or the dogs and the coyotes, right? But. I know strange things happen in, in uh, the wildlife. It's happening more and more, but I think the wildlife is being thrown off just as much as we are. Well, less for us, I think, but we've got, uh, I wouldn't say less for us, different for us. Um, than it would be for the, the the wildlife. We're pushing the wildlife back and back and back and, and giving them less space, right? So no, the less space they got, they start dying off or this or that. Right? I don't so, know if you can even make that out at all, but they're called koi wolves. This is the Google. It says koi wolf is an informal term for a canine hybrid descended from coyotes, eastern eastern wolves, and gray wolves. All members of the genus Canis are closely genetically related with 78 chromosomes and therefore can, can be interbred. It says that one genetic study indicates that these two species genetically diverged relatively recently. Let me see if yeah. I can get a bigger picture. I don't know. You're probably not going to be able to see that. Oh, I see them. Yeah. Yeah. They're crazy looking. I'm just saying the one that we saw was, it was so massive, like, I, I don't think it was just a coyote. Could have been a, it could have been a you know a bigger breed of dog. It could have been a wolf. I don't know. Yeah. Oh yeah, and then there was the one we saw on the highway that came running right out in front of our car that was 
completely white and humongous. And Chris is like, did you just see, like, he thought he was tripping, you know? He's like, did you just see that? Was that a white wolf? I'm like, I don't know what that was, but it was definitely white and looked like a dog of some kind. It was either the largest yeah. albino coyote ever, or it was literally a white wolf, man. Like, <laughs> It was crazy. You're down to yeah, sometimes it's really hard to tell. It's really hard to tell sometimes. Was it like three? Yeah. Night gear. Hope you have a good day. Night, Bob. Yeah, it's really hard to tell. I thought, like with my last dog, he, uh, Hurt his knee before I found out he uh, had hip deplasia and that. Yeah. And uh, oh. by this time, he was like two and a half, between two and a half and three years old. Um, and it was in February. And uh, he took out what looked to be like a, um, it was big. Um, it wasn't no coyote, right? It, it was uh, at least the size of, of my dog tank and he was huge, right? Like 135 pounds, I think at the time. And, uh, this thing pretty much matched his size. And, uh, so my landlord's out there helping get the rid of the body and that. Right. So, uh, he goes, this ain't no coyote. This is like a, a dog or, or a wolf or something. Right. Yeah. Open up the mouth, seeing the teeth. This ain't no dog. This is a wolf. Yeah. Like, holy shit. You know, and the, at that time, mm -hmm. this is going back over five years ago now. Uh, so, that time, mm -hmm. I know the wolf population in Grand Valley was very little. I mean, like, for every 100 coyotes, there was like one wolf at the yeah. time. That was my opportunity, and I friggin' missed it, man. He had one, and he lost it. Does you heard it? Go zoo. I did. By That's why I, I was flipped like, flipped it and hooked it. It was gone. He just wanted a little taste. Yeah, that's literally all it did was just taste the fucking thing and move on. He's like, nope, it's not squid. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't feel like mackerel tonight. Not in the mood for mackerel. But you know what? The moon just started popping out, and that happened. So, hmm. I have coyotes. They can be a, a, a little vicious. Effort. Oh yeah, I can imagine. Well, that thing, I mean, that, thing, that thing stood toe to toe with me. Like, wasn't, I didn't even blink. I'm just slowly backing up. And I talked the whole time I was backing up. Like, good doggy, nice doggy, stay there. Don't follow me. And I then, like, when yeah, I got enough distance, when I got enough distance between me and it that I knew I could open the car door and jump inside, I booked it. Shut the door. I locked yeah. the door. Don't ask me why I locked the door because I don't think <laughs> the coyote could open it. And then he just stood there staring at us. Chris puts the window down. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm going to talk to it. <laughs> well, he might have something. Maybe. He's playing with something. Yeah, maybe. I remember. I remember one night, me and Tank, I had just gone home. My he had my landlord had sheep, like a thousand sheep. He was a sheep farmer. And I could go over there, drop 200 bucks in his lap, because that's what he would get for hang weight of his sheep at the slaughterhouse. And that's what I fed Tank. 
uh, with heat and uh, dry kibble. And so I bring this thing home, skinned, dead, gutted, everything right. Yeah. And I've got it, uh, and we did this in the evening. Um, on a, it was uh, mid November. And uh, so I got it sitting in this little hallway room there before I went into my house. And I've got a wet towel, like a wet blanket wrapped around it so the outside of the, the sheet the skin went harden and get all crusty and that yeah and I was letting it hang there overnight whatever blood out of it that I could before I butchered it up and my tanks just I go to bed but one two in the morning I, I wake up tanks just losing it I mean like ready to go through the door almost and uh, yeah. so I go through the first door I'm at the second door looking down and there's like a dog like shape outside the door. And I knew it was it was a coyote for sure. I just didn't know how many That's more there was out there. There's two more out there. And uh, the one was scratching right at the door trying to get in uh, at the sheep there. And so I, I got Tank there and I got my gun and I let Tank right out the door. Boom. Took that first one out. Within like three minutes, took him out. I, I crawled over him and, and that coyote, and I got the second one. And as I go to clip the, the, shot, the shotgun for the second shot, my dog tanks on the second one. Yeah. You know, it, it happens yeah, so that's fast. The kind of, that's the kind of dog you need on a homestead, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, when you're in the, like, like the property I was on across the street from my landlord was a hundred acre property, right? Yeah. His property was a 250 acre property. Um, my other neighbor had a 300 acre property across the street from him was a 400 acre property, right? So you're looking at a hundred acre property plus, you know, in that yeah. area, trees, farms, crops you know what i mean and uh i was in the middle in between the farm his farm and the coyote home so there would be a lot of cross traffic from that home to the coyote his farm and on his farm there was a stream you know like coyotes aren't going to go too far from that farm or any other farm with a watering hole you know yeah so, they have everything they need right there <laughs> Yeah. I got my meal, I got my water, and I didn't even have yeah. to walk far. Yeah. You got an action? Yeah. I see him over here. He's doing the pace, the like something's going to happen pace. Yeah. You know what yeah, it is. I remember is I my dad seeing. <laughs> yeah, I remember my dad seeing Tank for the first time. He was about a year and a half old. Tank didn't know what to make of my dad and his wife, uh, my stepmom at the time. And my dad and stepmom were scared of him. Just yeah, most of people are. There's a lot of people that are oh, no, afraid no. of big dogs. Well, like, my, my dad's been a dog guy for most of his life, right? Like, yeah. but uh, the fact that medium dogs, not something that uh, would just go, not would just go and kill coyotes or whatever, right? But a dog that yeah. would do something like that, you know what I mean? We're talking miniature yep. collies that that you know, <laughs> kind of deal thing. And Not a hundred tank was just. You can tell that they need that kind of job, though. Like watching your videos, you can see how much energy they have, and they just need to burn it off. Oh well, he's he's not even a year year old so he's got the energy right tank was yeah. about seven or eight years old he 
eight years old before he passed away um, this past winter there. But uh, he was calm. He was still, he was calm as, as heck, right? Because he was older, right? He's still a yeah. puppy, like hyper as heck, like a kid, right? You know? So he'll calm down a bit, right? Just a matter yeah, of time. Lewis, when you see your dog, you don't think puppy. You know what I mean? He's so big. You're like, oh, wow, that's a that's a dog. <laughs> like, I don't look at him and go, oh, yeah. look, that's a puppy. <laughs> that's a big yeah. dog. No, it's the same, yeah, it's the same thing with my, my niece and her boyfriend got a beagle puppy. And he is, I think he's going right along six months. And oh my God, that dog, you can tell, you can tell what dogs are bred for. Like if he picks up a scent of something he wants to go investigate, you ain't stopping him, even yeah. though he's only 30 pounds. <laughs> he's taking you for a walk. Oh yeah. But he is, beagles, I have to say, I've owned a lot of dog breeds in my life. And beagles are smart. I know they are because they're used for hunting and all this. But they're stubborn dogs. Like so, he is so stubborn. Oh, yeah. Like you sit there and call. You sit there and call him, and he just like stares at you and tips his head. Like, are you talking to me? Like, I'm not bothered with you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like. The Great Pyrenees, they're they're stubborn more than anything else, right? Like they're 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 very independent. They're they're an older breed. Um yeah. from what I've uh, learned about them. They're like hundreds of years old, I think. And uh back in the day they just for farms, you know, to protect the livestock. Yeah. You know, and it wasn't until recently where um, they were brought into the home to protect the home, right? Like, like as a yeah. pet to protect the kids and stuff like that, right? So, uh, it, it takes a little more training to have them in the house than it it, it does on the farm, right? Um, yeah. Because if you're on a farm, you got mm -hmm. so many other dogs. All you got to do is put them in a field with livestock, with a couple of other dogs, chain them to a tire so they can't go too far, right? Yeah. And they stay there and they adapt to the to to what they're supposed to do there. Here they'll they'll push your kids over accidentally or or uh, you know. Oh yeah. So they, big. they they can't even help it. That's how yeah. my, I mean, my dog was about 120 pounds, but <clears throat> he was built like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Like the chest, the oh, chest yeah. width on him was insane. Like, yeah, if he wanted yeah. to come through, you were not getting in his way. He would just shoulder you. <laughs> like, excuse me, I'm, I'm coming through. It yeah. is three o'clock. He was he was so protective though, like that. I miss having yeah. a big dog for that. Like <clears throat> he was a rescue, so we had to do a lot of not just training but rehabilitation. Like I don't know exactly what he went through, but he was put in a kennel with eight pit bulls, and they attacked him for eight hours straight, and he survived. And you're talking eight pit bulls, something like that, some crazy like that. And he survived, but like he had scars all over his body just from the, all the bite marks. Like he looked like, you know, battle worn. <laughs> and uh, yeah. he took a lot, a lot of training to just to get close to me and Chris. Like he didn't really care about humans. You know, he couldn't be bothered. I don't know if he was just left in a kennel his whole life or if they were neglecting him or abusing him, but it took us a long time to get him to warm up and trust us. And then when, <clears throat> then when he did, like I walked him and I walked him and I walked him, he just had so much energy built up inside from, I think from being cooped up all the time. I mean, they had, they had him crate yeah. trained. 
they were like, oh, yeah, just stick him in here when he gets to be too much. You know, me and Chris, what was it, two months? I had a I had an incident with him where um, he was laying on my side of the bed in the middle of the night. <clears throat> and I went to get up to go to the bathroom. And I stepped on him accidentally. And he turned around and he lapped onto my calf. And he wouldn't let go. He just would not let go. And Chris was like half asleep. And he's like looking at like, you know, when something like that happens, you're kind of slow motion for a minute. You're like, is this really happening? <laughs> I pushed yeah. him off of me finally. And then he came right back. And I was like, well, you know, we had that bad talk where like, can we actually keep this dog? We have kids that come to our house. What if he does that to a child? You know, that kind of stuff. But in the end, in, in the end, we couldn't do it. We couldn't put him down. So I got him a muzzle and I muzzle trained him. Anytime he was aggressive, I would put the muzzle on him. And eventually he got the fact, oh, I have to be nice. If I don't want that stupid thing on my face, I have to be nice. It was just, you, you know. Were, you're, you were lucky. You guys were, you guys were lucky that way. Um, first and foremostly. Um, secondly. You're lucky that he didn't draw blood on you. Oh, he did. He been did. I, Lewis, I had oh. puncture marks that almost went all the way through my calf. <laughs> like they were just giant holes because a bulldog only, they don't have anything past their canines. It's just their canines. Like the big pointy teeth. There's nothing behind there. Yeah. So they can, because they were bred to be able to take down a bull. That's why they're called bulldogs. So in order to lock their jaw, not yeah. lock their jaw, but to close and not open again, they don't have any teeth yeah. back there. So his four giant teeth went straight into either side of my calf and almost touched. He drew blood. I, I was just fortunate enough that I got him off me the first time. And as he was coming back to grab me again, Chris was finally realizing what was happening. And he flew out of bed and grabbed him by the collar right as he was about to close his mouth again. And yeah, threw him in his crate. And I was like, oh my God, did that just happen? I was so, I mean, yeah. you, you don't really understand how scary a big dog is till that dog is coming at you in anger. And then you're like, holy crap, holy. this thing could kill me. This thing could kill me if it wanted to. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're, but, you guys uh, are yeah. lucky you didn't have problems after that because they uh, sometimes when they draw blood, that's it. You know, yeah. the, there's, there's usually a good old saying, you know, if you got a 200-pound yeah. pit, pit bull and it goes and bites somebody, you got to put it down because you just, you're never too sure if it's going to bite somebody else, right? Yeah. You know, because it, it's a good old but, saying, yeah, once like, they, they get that that blood, right? You can never be too sure. He he never had another never. incident with me. And the way I chalked it, the way I chalked it up, Lewis, is he would have never bit me if I didn't step on him. I caused him pain. He caused me pain in return. It was like, okay, we're even now. <laughs> but yeah. and besides that, when Chris, when Chris grabbed him off of me, you're talking a 120-pound dog. He lifted him yeah. off the floor by his collar. And I, I'm i pretty sure the dog shit his pants. <laughs> He's like, holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, like with with Tank, I got him at a month and a half old, which was a really good thing for me, um, because he slept in my bed, he was in my field truck, he was with me night and day. And as he was growing up, he'd bite me, didn't draw any blood, but there was times where I picked him up by his scruff, right, and yeah. uh, and he's got all that loose skin around his neck, just like Zeus does. And, uh, you know, he fit his pants and, and then happen again, you know, and he'd get a little too rough again. And, you know, 
pick them up by the scruff and throw them on the ground again. Once they realize who the boss is, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. They know. That's right? really, you know? That's and, really uh, that, what it was with that dog. That's really what it was and why it never happened again is because after that, like when we decided that we were going to keep him and not euthanize him, it was like, okay, well, if we're going to keep him, then we have to become the the leaders of the pack. Like he cannot think he has the upper hand at all. Yeah. And that and that and like I said, I exercised him so much and just using the muzzle, like getting the fact that, oh, if I'm gonna nip at somebody, this thing goes on my face. I don't want this thing on my face. Oh, babe, we're at fifteen percent. Oh really? Yeah. That happened so quick. I don't know. You got things popping up. Looks like something's downloading. I gotta grab a drink. Yeah, well, I don't here. know why it's uh. It's been on for like three hours. No, I understand that, but like you know, it should be plugged in and everything. Well, I guess um. Oh, there we go. It's plugged in now. Battery shut off? No, it wasn't plugged in all the way, man. I don't know if that's going to help. No, I'm dropping battery really quick. Yeah, it's because this shut off. It's There's no lights on on it. Yeah, it's on. Yeah. Oh, unfortunately, we're going to have to abruptly end this, Lewis, because um, my phone's going to die, and I don't want you to get caught up here by yourself. <laughs> All righty then. We yeah. Two whole people on the. Yeah, camp. I got I got eight percent, buddy. It's dropping quick. So, all right, everybody. Seven. Yeah, <laughs> seven. All right, by the second. All right uh, yeah, Lewis. Thanks, buddy. We will see you later. Robert, thanks um, for hanging out. Thanks for hanging out, everyone. Have a good one. If uh, we catch anything, you'll definitely see it on video. Yes. So. Yes. All right. Have a good one, everybody. Peace, Peace love, and happiness.